Thank you for subscribing to a Slice of Gaming Podcast Pro. Your subscription now includes access to today's episode of March 15, 2024, as well as access to the rare limited edition of A Slice of Sports, hosted by Fusion and Bop. We thank you for your patronage for making that possible. I'm your host, the pro version of Moonlight 150. We'd like to thank you for giving a slice of your time to tune in to a Slice of Gaming podcast. Be sure to tune in to us at YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, CastBox, Radio Public, and Audible. And follow us on Twitter at a Slice of Gaming. Not a lot of news this week, but we do have the upgraded pro version of all of us to get through it. Uh, so let us introduce the new pro versions of our hosts. We have Bench JC Pro. Uh, I guess I'm here. We have the Uncharted Wolf Pro. Uncharted Wolf? Wow, you used my uh, full name. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> and the Fusion Rated Pro. See, when you, Whoa, when you my the pro, full name as well. Yeah, you, Rated? You know, pro, yeah, when, we're, when you're the Pro version, you get the full name. Oh. Bro, use my birth name. Holy I shit. know. I feel scared right now. <laughs> So, uh, so as we can, as you can tell, we're all excited for the uh, PS5 Pro details that have recently come out, but only because that's the only news to talk about this week. There was nada. So to sort through all the nada that happened this week, we do have the Uncharted Wolf Pro to get you through it. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm You're going to unsubscribe from the Pro version of this podcast now. Yeah, I'm sticking with the base version. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, as, as Moon said literally nothing but hey we got some headlines and we got a fun topic today i'm I'm actually really excited to go over it but first and foremost as we alluded to quite a lot in the beginning of this episode we have the sony playstation 5 pro uh not revealed but we got a lot of details from a very trustworthy source aka tom warren over at the verge sony's ps5 pro is up to three times faster may arrive holiday 2024 Sony is reportedly working on a PlayStation 5 Pro model that may well include a far more powerful GPU that's up to three times faster than existing PS5 models. YouTuber Moore's Law is Dead claims to have gotten access to a technical overview document for the PS5 Pro, codenamed Trinity, and now Tom Henderson at Insider Gaming reports that the leaked specifications are accurate and the console is currently set to release during the holiday 2024 period. Screenshots from the technical document include a mention of 67 teraflops... (laughs) Back to that one. Of 16 bit floating point calculations, which works out to around 33.5 teraflops. That reportedly works out to a 45% rendering performance improvement over the PS5. The existing PS5 is a 10.28 teraflop console, so tripling that would be a significant performance increase on the GPU side alone. The documents, which were reportedly posted to Sony's own developer portal, also mentioned PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution. This is rumored to use PlayStation Machine Learning for image upscaling that's similar to NVIDIA's DLSS or AMD's FSR. This may well include upscaling to 8K resolutions in future versions. And will help improve ray tracing performance on this rumored PS5 Pro hardware. Um, so that's pretty much kind of all the details that we got. Lots of numbers. Lots of numbers. The big number is, hey, it's more than PS5, which equals good for us. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I mean, it seems yeah, like go ahead, to be a, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, it seems like to be a pretty big um, increase, even compared to like. Uh, um, ps4 pro like this could like really improve stuff it seems like the ai cores and stuff will really boost performance yeah i will say going over this story this was basically just an advertisement for gta 660 fps (laughs) because we know for a fact that thing's going to launch at 30 fps on like our current consoles and it looks like hey if you want 60 fps you're most likely going to need to get a pro Unless Rockstar decides, fuck you, it doesn't even run 60 on a Pro, <laughs> which, I mean, listen, there's a possibility of that. Uh, Fuja, what do you think of that? I mean, I'll riot. I'll go to Rockstar. <laughs> it's like, the only, like, way I see them doing that is if it's a type of thing where they're like, we can't have a Pro version because the Xbox version, like, would be inferior. Would they care? I don't know, but, like... If one entire console family gets the best version of your game and an Xbox is sitting there and they can't run your game as well as the other system, there could be some issues, but... I mean, the Pro came out before the Series... Not the Series X, the Xbox One X. So... There were still games like... Yeah, for the PS4. The PS4 Pro came out before this um, One X, so I'm pretty sure, right? 
Yeah, I did. Definitely yeah. did. Right. So like we were, they were already dealing with that stuff then. So like maybe it's not that big of a deal. But it's more of, I guess you could see Rockstar being like, we're not going to take advantage of this. But if everything about like PlayStation making their own FSR and such is actually happening, they won't need the devs to take advantage of it. That's the console will do the work for them. Did yeah, I'm really hope. Go ahead. I think it's interesting because you did bring up Xbox. And from our knowledge, we know that they are not going to have probably a pro system. And that does mean even like, Besides GTA 6, there are going to be a lot of third-party games that just work best on PlayStation. And it's, like, not even going to be comparable to Series X. Which I, I just think makes, like, a good talk. I don't know how aggressively the developers are going to utilize all 33 teraflops of this Pro. And again, this is this, none of this is fully confirmed yet. Yeah, it's very possible some of this has changed. I'm curious to see, you know, kind of where this thing launches, when it launches, and... The big thing for me is the price point. Uh, this For me, I'm kind of sitting here like, I don't think I'm getting this until I hear GTA 6 is confirmed to be 60 FPS on a Pro. And like when it, the launch of that game comes close. Because other than that, I really have no reason for a Pro. My PS5 works fine. I'm yeah. just gonna... it would, we'd have to wait for like the like full breakdown of like, does it actually like improve older games just by having more power? Are there going to be like a lot of patches from games that be like, here, here's a patch for, you know, God of War Ragnarok that uses a bit more power on your PS5 Pro and stuff like that. Like once that stuff starts coming out, maybe I'll be interested. But at the current point, I'm not very interested. I mean, it's probably something I'll get later on down the line, but nothing worth it at launch. I definitely plan to get it at launch because I just like new tech and stuff. But I do think it's going to be interesting if this is going to, they can like say that Spider Man, Ghost of Tsushima, and all that, like we're on at 120. 4K that's what I'm waiting for. Is I'm waiting for information like that, like if that's actually going to be what's happening. But even I, then, it's like I'm not going to be replaying those games. So I, granted, I'm, I'm making a contradiction out of myself. It's like I'm waiting to hear if older games are going to get patches. But at the same time, I'm not replaying games. I feel like at least on the first party side, you'll see patches because the Pro PS4 Pro to PS4, you saw those patches. Yeah. So I, I feel like gotcha. Uh, the one thing I will push back on is a lot of those PS5 patches for like a lot of the PS4 games did take a while. So I don't think any of this is going to happen at launch. And there will be like an increase, but like it won't be like a direct patch. Hey, Last of Us 2 is getting a PS5 Pro patch. Fusion, do you plan to get it? Um, yeah, I'll probably get it. Because I know at the very least, if even if third party developers aren't going to take full advantage, the first party devs will. And that's why I still have my PlayStation 5. Like, I'm there for the first party, I'm there for the PlayStation exclusives. Every game that's, like, coming from first party will take advantage of the entire Pro system. They did it for the entire PS PS4 Pro. Like, it was a big deal back then. I assume it will be a big deal now. So, like, just for that reason alone, even even if it's three to four to five exclusives a year that I'm only playing on my PlayStation, it will be worth it to me to just trade in the PS5 towards oh, yeah. the Pro. If Actually, that's probably the, my biggest thing of getting it either at launch or around launch is if like GameStop or someone else has like a killer deal to turn in your PlayStation 5 for it. If I can get like a good like $200 for my PS5, I'd probably just turn it in and be like, okay, you know what? Screw it. I'll just get it yeah. just because I can use that deal. Yeah. Yeah, well, like what, where you get like half towards the Pro or whatever. It wouldn't be half, like but... I'd say like a hundred, two hundred was probably like better than nothing. Better than does nothing. This, does this come what, with a disk drive? He keeps asking the questions I'm eventually going to ask. I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm taking over. <sighs> this is why I don't like podcasting with Bench. Uh, disk drive. I mean, wow. I think it, it's. I, I, I think it will. I feel like Sony doesn't really have a reason to just not completely get rid of the disk drive right now especially for a pro console, I think they're like, ah, well, we might as well just have it with this pro. You're not going to see disk drive most likely uh, midway through the next generation because at this point there is still a decent enough split to where it's like, okay, let's not go full off. I don't think it has a disk drive. I think it's like the PS5 Slim and you have to buy it separately. But it like has like the built-in thing where you can't have it. Fusion, you know, like I don't think they do, do two SKUs. I think that's too expensive. Yeah, no, two um, SKUs now. 
I sadly think Vinch is probably right. Like I don't. I think. Oh. Okay. It, okay. It, well, it's the fact that they're already pushing towards like, hey, we already got rid of the original PS5. Like they already got rid of the edition with the built-in disc drive. So why would they go out of the way to make the Pro have a disc drive? Yeah, he makes a good point there. And we know, like, two SKUs for the PS5 it was, it's just expensive to maintain. Why not just, like, push one? If that's it's happening, to... and I'm just not, I'm, I'm not going to buy the separate disc drive. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? You can, I'll just stick with my original PS5. <laughs> yeah, that's the only problem, because, like, I, I don't want to go full digital, and it's more of, like, if it doesn't come with this drive, and I don't buy that separate disc drive, I can't play the 50 hard copy games I already have. It's like, what's the point? So it's like, maybe like, PS4 games. Yeah, like I said, I, I think it will sadly probably be like digital with the disc drive, maybe. Which I don't know how much that disc drive costs anymore. I think it's, it's like, like fifty or sixty dollars. Like Seventy. Yeah. <laughs> which I, I guess it might be cheaper, but it's still like I don't know how that disc drive works. I've never looked at it. I'm just like, it literally just plugs in in a USB drive. No, it just like, like sits on the ground. Inside. Hang on, like guys. It's eighty dollars. <laughs> oh no! Oh, no. I, I'm definitely, game. I'm definitely in a position where like I have zero physical PlayStation games, so it doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, I I mean, it's it's a real <laughs> issue for us, Fusion. I know. <laughs> yeah. Me too. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you too. I, I don't know. I don't know if you still have them or if you sold them or not. No, I still have a good chunk of. I'm, I'm going to take a picture right now. Oh, but well, yeah. Tongue. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the big thing where it's like, I don't, I love it. I love it if they were like, we're just going to put the disc drive on there. And maybe, quite possibly, they're like, the pro is already for the hardcore. Let's put a disc drive anyways. Make this thing stick sugar dollars or something crazy with the disc drive on it. Like, that's they the could go that route. Digital without the disc drive. That's the thing. Without the disc drive, it's 600 <laughs> They can easily sell it for six hundred because people are gonna buy it. It's a it's a really frustrating thing with PlayStation at the moment that I really hate. They kind of are just adapting this Apple model of well, you're gonna buy it anyway, so we can just nickel and dime you all we want. Yeah, and I do think it's it's either it has a disc drive or you have to buy one separately. There's no no in between. I think. I guess we'll I... find out. Oh yeah, okay, man. I see your physical game. Sorry, all right. <laughs> Thirteen you know what? is sitting up there I... waiting to be played. Ah, uh, you don't need to. <laughs> oh no, you are right. You like plug it into like I just looked up a YouTube video. Yeah, you that's plug it like directly in. Okay. Yeah, it just plugs into like pretty much where you would plug into like charge your controller. Oh wait. Oh, no, I mean like it plugs into your console. Yeah. Man, you organize... as in under the shell. You put what? your PS4 and your PS5 games in order. You don't do and PS5 I... games first and then PS4. I would if there was enough PS5 games, but the fact I only have like five PS5 games, I okay, didn't see it was worth enough. it. <laughs> Maybe fair once enough. there's like more, I'll do it, but at this point, I'm just like, eh, whatever. Oh, you have to like rip off the fucking shell. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I think that's better than like, I thought Moon was saying like, you literally plug like a little device into the front of your PlayStation. Oh, uh, that's what I thought it was. Your PlayStation. No, I was like, I would hate to have something that's... plugged into my console next to it. <laughs> that was. Oh, um... yeah, no, for sure. That Clearly, was I never looked into this. Patent. That's probably why he thought that. Uh, that was but yeah, it actually was. like goes under there, so I guess it is a lot better than I thought, but it's still annoying. The fact like you this... have to manually install it, though, it's like... <laughs> I mean, well, okay. it could be... I can buy it separately, yeah. Jo like, if you think about it, it's probably helpful, because if your disk drive dies on a normal PS5, you're screwed. But if this thing dies, you just unconnect it and buy another one. <laughs> Which means they, they can make them die more frequently. So you find it. Has there been like reports of uh, disk drives dying? No, there, no, there hasn't. But I'm just saying, like, oh, okay. if something happened. happened. Well, I, yeah, I remember. Like, re I remember hearing that, like, once like information about this came out, people were worried that apparently it needs to connect to the internet. So yeah, once that the, a, yeah, the like, so once the servers go down for this thing, like, there is no way these disk drives will be useless. Exactly. Oh. That's kind of a big thing where, like, when you buy one, you literally have to connect to the internet first time around. Which is like, okay, we're pretty much hedging our bets that PlayStation keeps their online services <laughs> available forever. 
I guess I'll ask, when do we think this bad boy is going to release? So the, so the report does say 2024. Yeah. I if I had to sense. guess, I'd say November. My guess. I, I did hear that there's no first party game supposedly supposed to release with it. <laughs> that kind of goes in line with what we've been saying about PlayStation's 2024, how it's going to seem like a much quieter year. Now, there are those rumors of the Astrobot game, so maybe that does somehow squeeze it out. I I don't know. I question it. I, I think November, I don't think it launches with a game, though. I yeah, think it launches with Astro. I think it's going to launch with a bunch of small stuff. Because I remember they remember they keep saying, okay, Twitch or whatever, or YouTube. Um, unprofessional. <laughs> well, I was watching that video because I wanted to know how they would install it. Um, <laughs> but what, I, what you're saying is, I mean, the word about those PlayStation games is it's, it's no sequels or installments in any major franchises. So we're probably going to get launch stuff, but it's all going to be either revivals of old stuff or a bunch of things like Astrobot. I hey, respect like, Astrobot. Isn't there like the yeah. rumored Gravity Rush something? Oh yeah, like the That's oh yeah. Movie. There's apparently word word of like like a Gravity Two uh, Gravity Rush Two like remake going around right now. Uh, no, that was a PC port. Well, like it's just a remaster in general. Yeah, but uh, like that's a PC port, so I don't think that would be like something they would advertise mm. as their big boy game. I don't Bloodborne know if they have twenty four K. Stop talking about Bloodborne. Their big boy game will just be like <laughs> Call of Duty, or so it's gonna just gonna be a whatever third party game launches that fall. New Destiny, more Destiny expansions. As I looked, the twenty sixteen PS four Pro came with nothing. They were showcasing Call of Duty Infinite Warfare on it. Like, that game didn't launch with anything. Oh, yeah, I remember that was the same. They, um, didn't they show off, uh, what was it, Uncharted 4? And that was, like, a game that was already out. Yeah, I was <laughs> so, saying, Uncharted 4 came out in May. Game. So, like, but, yeah, I think they, they just showcased it, which is probably what they'll just do again. I think this game comes out, I mean, I think this thing comes out in November. My copium is there's a showcase in September, and that's where they announce it, and then they'll show in that showcase, like, some PS5 games running better. No, nah, they're going to announce it earlier than that. If it launches in November. PS4 was in announced May. in September. The showcase was PS4? in May. Ghost yeah, two. PS4 Pro was announced in September. Came out in November. Huh. I mean, that, that would set a precedent. But also, like, PS Portal, that was announced in May. And then came out in November. So I, I almost think that's kind of the new precedent they want to set. Yeah, I think Maybe. there's also like I don't know, Ghost Two is supposed to be announced in May, rumored. Get off the Ghost Two. <laughs> it's happening isn't this year? <laughs> but no, it's rumored to be announced in May. I think we'll get something in May. It doesn't mean we can't have another like show type thing in September. They I always do May in September. I mean, do they, always, they don't do like they used to do like showcases in May and September. But then it kind of went down to like just sh uh, state of plays in May and September. Which is what I mean. It doesn't have to be a showcase in September. It can be just a state of play in September. I just think we'll have oh, some, yeah. we'll, we'll have yeah, something no, in September right. where they could easily sh announce the console. No, I agree with you there. I, I, I'm leaning towards May. It's also GDC I week, so who knows? I think they announce <laughs> it in May and maybe announce like the actual date in september because i don't think i think they just say holiday 2024 in their initial announcement you know i guess they could do that double down we will see. we will see i'm very excited to see more hopefully announce it soon because i feel like i've heard of this ps5 pro when the ps5 came Ever. out <laughs> i just thought out there when this headline first went up there was a mistype and it said holiday 2025 I was like, dude, and there's you no cried. Way. I did for a solid 10 minutes until they corrected themselves. Because I was like, you're telling me you're releasing this Pro after GTA 6? Like, what's happening here? I feel they're really, like, speeding it up for GTA 6, it feels like. <laughs> they're just like, hey, if you if you want GTA 6 at 60 FPS, because they don't have to worry about PC because Rockstar is a company from 1925 or some shit. <laughs> so <laughs> they're like, okay, we don't have to worry about a PC port. So it's like the best place to pay play GTA 6 is PlayStation 5. Pro. I'm very curious, very very curious to see what Sony can do with that information. Do Do you think they try to do like a marketing cycle alongside Absolutely. GTA Six? Absolutely. Because I feel like they'd be insane not to. They They already have such a good relationship with Rockstar. I mean, GTA's at like every other PlayStation event ever. <laughs> like, 
Yeah, that's how they announced that uh, next gen port. <laughs> I yeah. still. Do you remember um, the initial PS5 showcase in 2020, and it started with the Rockstar yeah, logo? Yeah, the Rockstar logo. <laughs> that was fucked up. I legit was like GTA. <laughs> and it was, oh, it's GTA Five again. GTA Five yet again. And then that didn't come out for like a year and a half. Yeah, that took a while. God bless you, Rockstar. God bless you. Moving on. Uh, we got Mario Day announcements, uh, which was on a Sunday, which I don't know. You don't see a lot of gaming news on a Sunday, so that was kind of a funny surprise to wake up to. Uh, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door and Luigi's Mansion 2 release dates confirmed. This is Jordan Midler over at VGC. At the end of a new video posted to social media to celebrate Mario Day, Nintendo confirmed that Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door will be released on May 23rd, 2024. Alongside this announcement, Nintendo also revealed that Luigi's Mansion 2 HD will be released on June 27th, 2024. The visually enhanced version of Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, which was originally released for 3DS in 2020. That is not that is a typo. It was not originally released for 3DS in 2023, Jordan Midler. Come on, man. <laughs> it was announced last June. Uh, the Thousand Year Door... Uh, wait, hang on. Okay, this is the next part. The confirmation of the release dates of both games came after news that Nintendo and Illumination are working on a new Super Mario Bros. film. According to the announcement from Nintendo, the film, which is based on the world of Super Mario Bros., is set for release on April 3rd, 2026. Um, so to start off, Thousand Year Door, getting a date. Very exciting. On my birth month, might I add. So, Seems like someone happy... has a gift coming. <laughs> That's not my gift. <laughs> and I'm on that day one. I cannot wait for Thousand Year Door. Yeah, I'm, I'm for sure day one. This is like an all-time great. I'm very excited. From like the screenshots we've seen it's looking pretty good like more than a remaster kind of thing oh yeah like this is a full-on remake which is like if you would have i'm not the biggest super mario rpg fan but like you know the legend of this and thousand year door and if you were to like tell us at the beginning like the switch generation that these like two like very like legendary games would be getting like remakes on switch i would never believe you it was surprising genuinely speaking to see both paper mario and super mario rpg to get this treatment it is kind of surprising they uh they skipped uh n64 paper mario which is a great game but like it kind of yeah. felt like oh yeah we're gonna get, get do the definitive paper mario first and foremost i think with we both Earth. played 60 paper mario 64 last year and that was really good yeah i love that game but i think they're doing thousand year door because you can play paper mario on the switch with nso yeah that so was probably kind of like this. their strategy was like, okay, we can easily just throw the original Paper Mario on NSO and then we'll remake Thousand Year Door. It's that whole thing with Super Mario RPG and Thousand Year Door getting remakes. This is just Nintendo doing wish fulfillment remakes at the end of the Switch's life cycle while they work on newer stuff. Which is yeah, a great definitely. which is a great move to make. Also yeah, like, this is very much a last year of Nintendo Switch, like, hey, there, this is not going to be like the most crazy year for the console. Yeah. We're basically just like biding time for Switch Two type of also, like, releases. Also, your door isn't a small game. It's like a thirty-hour RPG. Oh, dude, it's a full-on JRPG, and I love it for yeah. that. Yeah, and then we have. I'm very curious about Zelda Ports this year. Uh, before that, we could, I will say Luigi's Mansion Two HD. It was that funny thing where everyone was talking about that's your door, and then it was like, oh yeah, Luigi's Mansion Two as well, which. I think Mike Minotti kind of put out perfectly where, yeah, Luigi's Mansion 2 looks good, but I think I would rather just play Luigi's Mansion 3. <laughs> yeah, it's and a it's good the... game, and I like it. Yeah, no, it's a good game. It's just, like, easily the weakest Luigi's Mansion. And it's like, hey, guys, we're releasing this for $60. It's like, it's a 3DS game. <laughs> like, no, thank just because you. You, you put it in HD, like, that's cool, but, like, so far, we haven't seen any new features to make it worth the 60. Yeah. Now, of course, Nintendo has very short marketing cycles. Maybe they're like, oh, there's 12 new mansions, <laughs> but kind of doubt that. Yeah, I just, I do think 60 is kind of like a hard sub, but it's definitely something maybe I just cough up the extra 40 and do like the game ticket thing for Switch and just get them both, but who knows? Oh, yeah, I forgot they do that ticket system. That's really good. I have yet to do it. Uh, And then. Mario movie. Hey guys, shocker. <laughs> the movie that made a billion dollars is getting a sequel. That is the interesting thing about it is they didn't directly call it a Mario Brothers sequel. It's just, they call it another movie in the Super Mario Brothers universe. So it could be something just a little different. 
no, I, I, I think two. it's just gonna be a two. <laughs> like, I feel like they're we- Nintendo's weirdly cagey about shit like this, even for something as obvious as a movie. Like the next, the sequel to a Mario movie, they're still gonna go like, well, we don't know if it's a sequel, direct sequel yet. <laughs> they called Tears of the Kingdom Breath of the Wild a sequel to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for two years. Because the title would spoil it, which yeah. it didn't. <laughs> and I, I do think maybe this has like some subtitle that they're not nailed down on for sure yet. So yeah, but I bet it's like a subtitle situation and maybe not just a direct two. Is, Super is there... Mario Brothers, Yoshi's Island. Yeah, I do think for sure it's going to involve Yoshi because that um, mm-hmm. spoilers in the end credit scene to Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, click off if you really care about that being spoiled for you. But uh, it kind of ended with a Yoshi egg being hatched, so it's like, okay, Yoshi's going to be the focus for the next movie. Which, hey, I love Yoshi, so that's a, that's a fucking fire-ass premise. Yeah, but uh, overall, pretty fun Mario Day. Not a lot. Very much just release dates. Kind of just going like, hey, here's your updates. And then called it here's off from Mario. there. Here's your Mario. Here's your Mario. I'm excited. I will say, I'm like, I'm itching for a direct. <laughs> I'm itching for at least like a Switch 2 announcement. I just, I want something to look forward to. Other than ports and remasters of games that I'll admit I've played these before. Which well, I'm excited to play again. we have the game for you? We have Princess Peach coming next week. Uh, you know, I could skip that. <laughs> I, I could skip that. Literally all the, like, uh, previews from the demo were like, it's a good game for your kids. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Damn, I, I played it. I guess I'll talk about it later in the podcast, but yeah, I did play the demo. It ran like shit. <laughs> yeah, you said, uh, you were telling me about the foyer? <laughs> yeah, the foyer. The foyer. Never heard that word before in a sentence. <laughs> Moving on. Multiverses returns Usually in wake up. May. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, returns in May, running on Unreal Engine 5. Uh, Chris Scullion over at VGC has this. Multiverses will officially return on May 28th in a new video releasing the ga- revealing the game's re-release date. Game director Tony Hein explained that previous criticism had been taken on board. The team has heard your feedback and learned a lot from our open beta, Hein said. Here at Player First Games, it's always been our aspiration to make a platform fighter that you'll love as much as we do. We've been working hard on a variety of changes and updates to deliver an improved gameplay experience. Uh, According to Hein, these changes include the addition of some really exciting brand new personalities to roster, new stages, improved netcode, and new moves for each character. The game also shifted to Unreal Engine 5, and a new PvE mode will be introduced with unique rewards. Uh, Very curious to see how this does fusion we learned before the podcast that you were apparently really big into multiverses how's this getting you excited but also that release date still seems so far for like i thought they were going to i didn't maybe not a shadow drop but the way they were teasing on twitter i assume no one here was actually following that i was <laughs> but, I was. No, I yeah. but like they were teasing and like dripping news out where i was like oh they should probably shadow drop this or at least this month i was like oh they're gonna like be like in three weeks hop back on multiverses so i love all the stuff of them like i think the pv the pve mode will be like interesting i like the new like net code improved net code is always good for your fighting games and like it's gonna be interesting to see who the like new people on the rosters are but i do wish it wasn't still like over two months out where it's like this is still like 10 weeks away where i thought I really thought it was going to be like, hey, play this. Maybe not today, but play this within the next two weeks. Like, we're going to be back. Yeah, I will say, um, I, I think I'd be on your side, but it does seem like they're going to add a lot more to the game than we initially expected. Now, granted, it's been a while since this game was taken off the market. It came out in 2022, correct? Yes, I want to say that. Yeah, so two years now. So it seems like they've been actually really working on the, um, everything well, here. Well, switching engines would definitely do that. Do you, do you think there's like a multiverses reversed? Or like, do they have a subtitle or is it just going to be multiverses? It's just going to be multiverses. Yeah, I assume we're going to be multiverses again. Because only right. the nerds like us are going to be like, oh, look at the Unreal Engine 5. Or to the, like, the casual Bugs Bunny and Superman fan who are playing this game, they won't notice that difference. So yeah, Maybe. they're just going to just call it multiverses. And most people won't even notice the difference. Fusion, you main Shaggy, right? Yeah, I was Shaggy main. I'm a Harley Quinn main. 
I think I played um the Game of Thrones character. Oh, Arya. Yeah. She was she was Arya, my second yeah. name. Yeah. She like was if fun. I if I, I didn't want to go Shaggy, like if I had a counter or something or something, Arya was the next character I chose. Wait, Mine so you were Taz. really into you were really into multiverses. You never played Smash? I have, like as in I've never remember before the Switch, I never really owned a Nintendo console. So like I wasn't huge oh, yeah. into Smash. Multi versus is like definitely the mo- most I've ever gotten to that like style of fighter. Like my main in Smash was always Kirby. Oh, like yeah, when I, I pl- when I played Smash and like I was just Kirby brick. <laughs> like, oh, you were one of those players. Yeah, oh, I was one of those players that was so yeah. annoying. Uh, just Kirby brick, but uh, yeah. So and like Smash is always like I'll play. I've the most I've ever played Smash is like in party settings. Like if you're drinking with friends or you're just playing with family and you sit there and you're like let's load up Smash and like play Smash Ultimate and all that. But it's never been like a game I ever played by myself or ever owned personally. I've never owned the Smash. And it's just like there's always been something a little off. I know people love Smash. There's always been something a little off with like the way it feels to me, where like multiverses felt so good to me. And I assume it's just because it's the net coding and it being like an actual real, like modern take on the genre. So I don't know. Multiverses well, like, definitely, heavy. definitely felt heavier. Multiverses definitely felt heavier. Oh, no. I was about to say multiverses felt floatier. I was just saying, I thought of, I, from okay, what I played it, it felt a lot lighter to me. It felt lighter when you're like in the air, but like the actual hits of oh, you, everyone yeah, felt it. Yeah. yeah. Like you felt that. I, like I feel like they did a, which the net coding, everything makes me really excited because I felt like everything already felt so good. Like there's been so many try to create Smash clones and like Brahalla is still, like I just played Brahalla like a week ago again, just to like, we were, had nothing to do as a friend group, so we loaded that up, and that was okay. But, like, nothing has ever reached, like, Smash quality level. And Multiverses might not be Smash quality le- level to a lot of hardcore Smash fans, but for, like, the general casual audience, like, Multiverses was the closest to, like, wow, these characters, these movesets, these hits actually feel really good. Yeah, I will say, for uh, as a hardcore Smash fan, it is the closest to the quality of Smash. It's not, like... That's good, but it's still close. At least closer than like stuff like um, what was it? Rivals of Aether, Brawlhalla, a lot of these other platform fighters. Where it's like these aren't all star. <laughs> yeah, Nickelodeon All Stars Brawler. It's like these games aren't bad, but it's like it's so hard to like talk about the quality of them without mentioning Smash. It's like oh, Smash feels yeah. better. Or like <laughs> PlayStation, WB, PlayStation All Stars. So much. You have so many characters you can go in multiverses. I mean, like you said, Game of Thrones, you have Superman and their Batman. Like, it's the closest you can get to, like, making a Smash style roster that feels, like, fun and unique. Where, like, Smash has everyone. Brahalla, you have, like, these weird, like, everything else is, like, Nickelodeon, you only have, like, SpongeBob and all that. But multiverses, you had, like, Arya fighting Shaggy of all people. Like, it was just, like, a fun what thing. What for supposed to be coming? Yeah, like, Gandalf was rumored back in the day. Like, there were so many characters they could do with that stuff. Yeah, that, there's a definitely a wide possibility for multiverses, and it's interesting to see where they will actually go. I mean, we got LeBron James of all things. Yeah, we were sitting there with LeBron James. The closest um, roster that could compete with a Smash in a multiverses is probably PlayStation All Stars, but PlayStation ain't gonna do that. They're done with that. They should just put their games in multiverses. I'm, I'm like, put their characters in multiverses. Dead serious, just put them in there. No, but then you're killing the dream of PlayStation All Stars too. Let me dream. For you. I need <laughs> to dream about that. Let's make multiverses exclusive. I, I, I'm not joking. I think about PlayStation All Stars like once a week. <laughs> like, I'm like, what? What happened there? Give it to the Bandai Smash team. Just give give it to them. Give, give it for exactly. toys for Bob. Toys for Bob. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what the fuck are we supposed to do with this? <laughs> make it a platformer. Kratos is now a platformer. Hang on, now you're speaking my language. I mean, God of Moving War on. is a little bit of platformer. You don't, don't call God of War a platformer. He <laughs> does not jump. There is no uh, jump button. It's got a little bit of that DNA. But the original <laughs> games had some. It had a jump button. I'll give you that. But it's not a platformer. <laughs> It's in the same Moving way on. as Doom Eternal be. Moving on. <laughs> Bracer confirms the $247 million sale of Saber <laughs> assets and withdraws from Russia. This is a, there's a funny aspect to this story I think about a lot. 
Um, Embracer has officially sold off Saber Interactive, the group which is home to Studios 3D, Realm, Slipgate, Ironworks, and more for $247 million. In an announcement to investors on Thursday, Embracer said the sale would now mean it cease all operations in Russia while improving its cash flow. Saber is being sold to a group of private investors under Beacon, a company controlled by Saber Interactive co-founder Matthew Karch. And then uh, update, according to Bloomberg, Beacon intends to exercise an option to acquire 4A Games, uh, the Metro Studio, and Zen Studios Pinball, which would see the total value of the deal rise to about $500 million. Uh, so this is something that we kind of talked about, I think, a couple weeks ago when it was all breaking, this idea of like Saber Interactive breaking off of the Embrace. And now it seems like it is officially fully happened. Now the deal is closed. The funniest part about all of this was... Uh, Mr. Lars Wingford, the CEO of Embracer, you know, friend of the show, was basically saying, hey, we're do- when we do this, we're ceasing all operation in Russia as a way of se- trying to do the moral high ground. Like, yep, we're, we're not involved in Russia anymore. It's like, what, what are you guys trying to do here? <laughs> are you trying to go for a moral victory here? It's uh, very seems like, hopefully this scene... Uh, Spells in the future some more studios separating from the embrace because God knows they could they could get out of there. Yeah, it's good to see some people get out, and it's good to like know that Embracer is willing to let people. I mean, the Metro team got out as well, right? Yeah, they were part of that too. So. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Sabre, Sabre um, they're actually a pretty sizable publisher. They were kind of the ones doing a lot of the heavy publishing work under Embracer Group. So now I'm like, okay, what the fuck does Embracer have left? Because they're probably going to lose Gearbox soon, because uh, we had that rumor. I would say that and was rumored it's... way before any of this came out. I think Embracer I think... still has Aspire. <laughs> so that's okay. I think they completely cleaned their hands of gaming like year two. Like two years from now? I mean, yeah. it is going to be hard to sell off all the subsidiaries, but it's also like... Man, that'd be awesome. <laughs> that'd be just really cool. a Lord of the Rings publisher. <laughs> they just yeah, only publish Lord of the Rings games. They bought the license for that. I forgot. They just straight up are like, yeah, we, we own all the publishing rights for any Lord of the Rings and Hobbit related media. It's like, why? Why did you buy that? Did you just see it on sale and said, ah, fuck it? <laughs> yeah. That's a word. Just like everything else they bought. <laughs> this is a weird ass company. I am. Very happy that they're going to basically go away. Now, they do still own a few other studios, as um, pointed out in the article. They own the Chivalry Developers, Tripwire, uh, Beamdog, Tuxedo Labs, Demiurge, Shiver, Aspire, Snapshot Games, 34G. 34 Big T things. That is one of the worst developer names I've ever heard. <laughs> but it seems uh, it seems as if like most of the big stuff under uh, Saber Interactive got to be able to go with their big daddy saber and leave embracer for good i'm curious where what the trajectory of embracer is bench seems to be very adamant that they kind of clean their hands completely of gaming i'm kind of more on the side of fusion i think fusion i think you said it as a joke but i'm like maybe they do just kind of become a licensing studio where it's like yeah we license lord of the rings and you just come to us for the lord of the rings like properties and whatnot Maybe. I mean, they have, like, the teams behind Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, they have teams that could do, like, licensed stuff. And they could 100% just, like... I feel like that would be the smart... If you really, truly don't want to, like, lose it all and shut down, like, you're going to have to go licensing or something. I mean, EA said they don't want to do licensing anymore, so what is it? (laughs) It's a a very... The the video game industry is going through a very big change right now. We're kind of living through it. Very, very interested to see where it goes from here. Uh, Moving on to some more, I guess that was positive news, but even more positive news. Uh, We got some sales figures, and this is going to be our last uh, news topic. Okami Games has this one. Helldivers 2 has sold more than 8 million copies, according to analysts. Uh, Quote, most remarkably, the numbers are growing every week. We believe the game has performed well ahead of expectations. Uh, Man, (laughs) what a great game, and... Thankfully, yep. a lot of people seem to agree, leading to 8 million copies in sales, which is way more than I ever would have expected. Do you think their expectation was like, oh, best case scenario, a million? Yeah, I was thinking maybe even like 500,000. 
Like, I don't think they were expecting yeah. to have, like, 500,000 concurrent players. 8 million is pretty insane. 8 million is, like... That's how you know you have, like, a really massive game on your hands. That's usually, like, reserved for, like, pretty much AAA games at that point. Does Sony buy them? They have like, said that they are not in the talks to be acquired. Yeah, yeah they're liars. Which <laughs> but liars. I mean, that's I mean, what that's what Blue Point said too. Look what happened. I mean, I just I think it's a different market at the moment in terms of like you know being able to like get money at like because it used to be at the pandemic you get money at like zero percent interest. There was like no interest, so you could literally just get infinite money glitch for a lot of these companies. But nowadays, that's not really the case. So buying studios is like, okay, now we really have to like commit to this. We have to be careful when it comes to buying a studio. Now, granted, Arrowhead probably isn't going to be too expensive for Sony to buy, but I think they're at the moment, they're like, okay, you know what? You guys can stay as like a second party company. We can kind of keep you where like, I doubt Arrowhead's like looking to get acquired by like Xbox or anything unless they go in for a snipe. Yeah, I mean, because Dude. I mean, Helldivers is owned by Sony, like the yeah, IP. I so just looked into that, yeah. Arrowhead doesn't like own it, so even if Arrowhead, Arrow, even if Arrowhead went somewhere else, like they can't use the IP. <laughs> I'm very curious to see kind of the ceiling. What, what, what is the ceiling for Helldivers too? What, what do you think it reaches, like both concurrent players wise and uh, sales? I think we pretty hit it. Like it's probably not going to get much farther because the, the game is only just going to get older. The casuals are going to move on to other games, and the diehards will stick around. And yeah, this is probably about as high as it gets. Maybe a little bit higher, and then it'll reach. It'll just get to that point of like a lot of multiplayer games where you'll be, you'll you'll fall or a falter off, and normalize. And then as soon as like the big DLC happens, they don't go back up, and they'll just constantly go up and down from there. But I think this is about as high as it gets. I actually think, I think, I think the concurrent players stay around where they at for a while. But I think you hit twelve million copies in a year. Yeah, I think 12 million is uh, fair enough. Yeah, sales, yeah, it'll keep going because people are going to be like, let's all squat up and play this. But in terms of like the masses all playing at the same time, I think we probably hit that peak. All right, concurrent players wise, I agree with you there. Um, But I think sales probably hits two to 12 million by at least uh, its first year on the market around February 2025, it would be. I do want, it has been getting constant updates and it's kind of reaching that point of like, man, this is more in the zeitgeist than I expected. But I also said that about Power World, and Power World, I don't want to say, like, fell off, but it kind of was really massive for its first month, and then, like, it's kind of just meandering. Like, it's doing think... well, they're updating it, but, like, people aren't talking about it the way they were the first month. That's just multiplayer games in general, that if your name is not COD or Fortnite, that's pretty much how it always goes, is if you'll have a successful launch, and if you're really good, you'll be in the zeitgeist for about a month or so. And then people go back to their regulars or they move on to the next big single player. I mean, we had Persona, Final Fantasy, Helldivers, and a bunch of other games come out. And so all, things like Pal World and even Helldivers will fall off because the masses just move on. I do think this is a little different from Pal World. Pal World is early access, and they haven't put out any substantial content. Helldivers has been pumping out content. Adventure. Oh, I said uh, I do think this is different from Pal World because Pal World came out and didn't really have any new content, but Helldivers came out and it's just been pumping out new content in a very just engaging way for fans. Yeah, I mean, uh, Pal World did recently announce a new raid, but I do agree that they haven't. They have a roadmap. They had things going and there's like updates but it seems like the overall zeitgeist around power world has kind of just uh stabilized and went like yeah that's a really popular game that's still a game that a lot of people are playing but not to the extent that they were initially when it came out yep very interesting indeed um and then the other sales topic here monster hunter world has sold over 25 million units worldwide Capcom's best-selling title of all time, uh, the Monster Hunter series, has now sold 97 million total, and then Monster Hunter Wild scheduled for release in 2025. I should mention this is Genki over on Twitter. Um, yeah, this is way more than I expected for Monster Hunter World. I remember the last stat for this game was like 17 million, at least from what I remember. Maybe it went up from that. 
But yeah, 25 million, it kind of tells me that this would probably be its peak. Maybe it gets to 30 million by the end of its life cycle. But the, the, the thing is, like, it is at the end of its life cycle. Like, it doesn't get, like, substantial content updates anymore. So it's kind of like, okay, people are still buying it despite that. Now, obviously, it's been heavily discounted. It was part of that PlayStation Plus collection when the PS5 came out. But it was still very much, like, the the big like content updates, the big updates for the game have ended already at this point. So it is pretty impressive the legs that this game had. And it kind of tells me Monster Hunter Wilds is going to be a much bigger game than we are all expecting. Yeah, for sure. I think this game is going to blow up. I'm, hopefully, I can get into it. Yeah, I tried to get Monster Hunter World. I, it was just a little too slow for me. But I, I respect the game. It's definitely keep- a great game the movement of rise and like throw it kind of with that graphical prowess and more scale of world i think it can be very good fusion what 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 chance would you get into monster hunter <laughs> um actually i like kind of like bink said like wild would be the one that's like i kind of want to like i would like to jump into a monster hunter at launch to like experience that community yeah i feel that it's a, it's a very welcoming community. I've had friends. It, it was a, it, you know that feeling when you have a friend group that's really into a game, but you don't have the game, so you're kind of just there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hell divers. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Except I own the game. I haven't, I haven't tried it in a week, so I don't know if it's work. I I don't know if honestly if it works because I haven't tried it in a week. But last time, which was last weekend, didn't work. So. Jesus, man, that game hates you. That is actually yeah. <laughs> unfortunate. Hope. Sony punishes them. <laughs> they just made you have to get the new PS5 Pro. Yeah, also, Sony would be like, hell yeah, the PC version doesn't work. Go buy a PlayStation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mo- moving on, that's all our news. We now we have a review roundup, but instead of a review roundup, we have a preview roundup for Rise of the Ronin. Uh, this comes from David Smith over at Kotaku Australia, which I actually didn't know they had an Australian branch, I'll be honest with you guys. Um, th- this is a good like roundup of all the like big uh, publications and like their kind of viewpoints on the game. Uh, IGN's final preview is happy with what it's seen so far, but it's fairly tempered in its praise overall. Uh, quote, Rise of the Ronin is poised to give players a lot to dive into, and while it doesn't quite live up to PlayStation's first-party open-world exclusives in the graphic department, the developers at Team Ninja has focused on what's important, an engaging story that has a great hook to keep you exploring, a fun gameplay system that will keep you striving to perfect your skills, and all of that is found alongside a smattering of fun activities to challenge yourself with. Uh, Games Radar was fairly effusive i've never heard that word in its praise uh particularly the combat but still came away from the preview window with questions quote rise the ronin strives to weave humanity throughout its open world sandbox whereby your actions can have a direct impact on its inner workings no matter how small or large again this weather scope feels a little at odds with what we've expect from team ninja neo like its soul series inspiration adopted a light touch approach to its narrative but that is of course no bad thing what it is different wait no <laughs> That This is the worst structured freaking sentence I have ever seen in my life. But that is, of course, no bad thing. What it is is different. What it is, what is, is indeed. Oh, my God. Okay, fuck you, Sound Games Radar. You can't fucking write anything. God damn, you don't fucking put two is's next to each other. It looks stupid. <sighs> Pace was a little more hardline. <laughs> Feeling that the open world wasn't as engaging as it could be and that the combat didn't nail the souls like fundamentals quote once again i'll couch these criticisms with some important caveats i only had a few hours with the game and there's an upcoming day one patch that might solve some of these problems rise of the ronin's open world has the potential to be less bloated and tedious than what's found in many other examples of them of the form and hopefully its performance issues will be sorted out before release the game is packed full of progress uh, progression systems sports a seemingly vast backdrop and lets you freely traverse via stead back grappling hook and paraglider but at least so far its action is simply not clicking for me almost entirely because i don't like how the parry feels sometimes a single grave flaw can cause an entire experience to miss the mark and i'm concerned that may be the case for team ninja's latest effort and there were a lot more previews but kind of the gist is it seems to be a lot more mixed than i think a lot of people are expecting uh more than more mixed than i was expecting i will say there were a lot of people who were like wow this game looks like a ps3 game and i'm like what ps3 games were you guys playing because <laughs> I, I i was there for the ps3 those games did not look that good <laughs> and i love i love the ps3 i love that game it's, called it's the ps that, but... it's what a ps3 game looks like in your memory is what that exactly. basically means 
exactly and it's like I really don't think that's the case. I think it looks fine enough. I I think people are a little too overzealous about this whole games need to look as insane as possible. And I'm like, I don't know, graphically it looks fine and we keep talking about how we want games to have smaller budgets, you know, look a bit worse but like be like better overall. Now granted, what actually the actual criticisms I was paying attention to were in cases of the combat and the open world. And there seems to be a lot more negative aspects to that than I was personally expecting, especially with the combat. I feel, feel like Team Ninja is always so solid with their combat. And what we got with that current, um, what was that, uh, preview? What The last preview I just read is that, oh yeah, the parry doesn't feel nearly as good as it should. So that is a little worrying for me. And I know also kind of funny um, previewed it. I know Blessing was pretty low on it. He was like, ah, it's not a game I want to go back to. I also know Washington Post, Gene Park, he previewed it and he was also like, ah, I'm not really big on the game. Now, of course, these are just like one per person who knows when the actual reviews come out. But this was a lot more tempered than I was expecting for the game. And it's kind of making it sound like, OK, this seems like it's going to be a fun sale game. But I don't yeah. know if this is a day one for me. It's definitely not a day one for me anymore. I'll definitely wait for it in sale. I'm sure I'll have a good time. It's definitely a little more lower than I was expecting. But I mean, there's plenty of other good games that are about to come out. So. Yeah, kind of like how you said earlier, like, I mean, I was, I don't know Moon's take on the game, but I was definitely lower on it from the jump compared to most of the people, like, nothing Not compared to you here. I was always like, I think Dragon Dogma 2 just looks better, like, if I'm going to get a game that day, it's going to be Dragon Dogma 2, but, um, it was that thing where, like, I watched Blessing's preview, he was, like, low on it, and then, like you said, Gene... And I read about Gene Preview. He was low on it. And then Skill Up posted a video like yesterday. He was also low on it. I'm like, those are three people that I usually like decently align with. Like their thoughts. I'm like, I can go to them. And like, if they're high on the game, I'm usually high on the game. If they're low on the game, I'm usually low on the game. So it's just, it was like the triple whammy of those three back to back to back where I was just like, it definitely just Black Friday or something. <laughs> like, doesn't seem like the game I'm going to get, but also it could. I mean, like this was just early preview, so who knows? Like this could review still very well. Yeah, Brittany Brombatcher from uh, What's Good Games, someone I actually usually trust with these type of games. She was really high on it. She said like the story wasn't doing much for her, but like overall the gameplay and the exploration was all high quality. But again, these are like different people, and like you said, like. Three people, those three people, as you also stated, Fusion, those are also people I very much trust their opinion on games. So I'm like, okay, it seems like this is not going to be that, like, really fun. <laughs> this is not going to be that Team Ninja breakout game that I was kind of expecting it to be. And I know Bop is, like, out there pumping his fist in the air, like, <laughs> yeah, suck it, Wolf, you dumb idiot. But hey, you Sony know what? Sony sucks. Yeah, Sony sucks. Oh, Xbox number one. <laughs> Sony had. Hey. Sony was was like promoting this as like this is your big PS5 exclusive for this like half a year. It's like you better enjoy it. And then now it's kind yeah, of they a, had a they have rebirth. Yeah, they have rebirth. But I think they were promoting <laughs> Rise of the Ron a bit more as they're like, look at our PS5 exclusive for the first half of 2024. If that's at least what it felt like. What was like, that last the... game Team Ninja put out? Wulong. Wulong yeah, Wulong. like that. I feel like this is the exact same conversation we're having again, where last year I felt that way. I felt like, oh, this will be Team Ninja's, like, put them on the map. This is going to be their breakout hit. And the fact that that one, most people, like, it was a good game. I didn't play it, but I've heard, like, it was a deep, like, people liked it, That's but I don't feel like it ever got to the point that they wanted it to. And now if this one is also not getting to the point of where it's wanting to, maybe Team Ninja just doesn't have that sauce yet to actually make the breakthrough they're gonna make good solid games but like are you going to get the masses in these type of games not they, they make now, games for me. <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're very much like seven out of ten action games that i they have a lot of heart and i respect what they're doing but i like from a critical angle i can't say these are the pinnacle it's just like yeah they're fun <laughs> I, I enjoy them for what they are that to me it's like they're like the jack-in-the-box the taco bell of gaming where it's like you're going to go there, you're going to get something that you enjoy, but you're not going to think about that meal for the rest of your life. You're like, oh yeah, that was fun. That was enjoyable. It's funny because I think like people love Neo 1 and 2, and like they're still like their highest critically acclaimed games, which is just like... Yeah, and I love uh... that Ninja Gaiden. I love that Ninja Gaiden trilogy as well. It's like, they've always made like very solid games. I, I did try Neo. I do need to go back to it, but like 
it, I, I I don't think of Neo as like a oh man, this is Team Ninja's masterpiece. Piece. It's just like, oh yeah, these are great, like you know, souls like games. You know, not as good as like the FromSoft variety, but again, like you're enjoying them for what they are. And I think I think they kind of like re, they kind of accepted that that's their niche, where it's like we make games that are solid, people are gonna want to play them, but like it's not like a From Software where like everyone talks, like everyone stops to talk about From Software's games. They're not aiming for that. They're aiming for solid, fun, enjoyable games. Now I will say. I I was expecting a bit more considering PlayStation was really promoting it as Moon said, but hey, you know what? I'm f- I'm down for a seven. <laughs> I mean, they've they've so put many out seven. a lot of games in like the last oh yeah They're like half efficient. a decade or so. Like I feel like every year or at least every like eighteen months there's a new game that <laughs> they're just putting out. They're very very um efficient studio. <laughs> I like to call them, but. It does also feel like, oh yeah, this is why these games come out so quickly. Now, again, like you said, Will Long, that was a game I enjoyed, but I will say this, I don't, I would not have spent full price on that. I played that on Game Pass. <laughs> so it was just like a, yeah, that, that's a good advertisement. These are like good Game Pass games. Which... It's the fourth game in four years. They have hit a game every single year. <laughs> the last, since they the Castle Generation started. <laughs> yeah, I'm very curious to see where those final reviews land. I, I, I guess, like, last-minute Metacritic predictions. I'm thinking 78, 79, somewhere around there. Yeah, what did I Wolong agree. score? 80 I around something. I thought... Yeah, higher than I uh, thought. Okay, right now. Because we got to remember Xbox tax. So it's going to be higher than Wolong. Okay, okay. Why? can we not say Xbox tax anymore? Wolong <laughs> was on. What do you mean? <laughs> Wolong was, was 81. Special. 81, so this is going to get like an 82, 83. I was going to say 83. 83. Yeah, I can see that. I feel like this one almost has more expectations put on it. So uh, oh, it yeah, definitely that's, does. It does. So maybe 80. Wait, Bench, do you have a prediction or no? Oh, uh, yeah, I was agreeing with you, Wolf. About 78, 79, probably. Look at that. BFFs. No, no, I'll never say that. Uh, wow. Moving on <laughs> to our t- <laughs> to our topic of the show. As we said, this is kind of slow news week, so we wanted to have a fun little topic to discuss all around. Now, we did do our kind of like first party uh, predictions, talk about like Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox their year, like what they're gonna do for the year moving forward and whatnot. And we kind of left out the third-party publishers, not on purpose, but kind of just a, oh, you know, we want to focus on the big three. And I think we want to actually do our discussion of the third-party publishers now. Granted, a lot of them have had their games kind of revealed, released, and whatnot, so we have a slight understanding of what the 2024 is looking like. But I still do want to have an overall discussion. I guess I'll just start it off. You know, I'm going to ask like a boilerplate question. Boilerplate? Is that what you call it? What's like a setting the stage? Okay, yeah, th- there it is. That's my but, answer. Yeah, that's what, that's what there was. <laughs> setting, setting the stage question for you guys. Which of the third-party publishers, and by the way, Activision doesn't count because they're owned by Microsoft now, which of, which of them is going to have the best year for 2024? Um, let me think. Oh, I think it's Capcom or Square. Maybe I'm going to go with Oh, Sega. It's kind of like thinking about it, maybe a little off topic, but I mean, Japan is just dominating right now. They finally are like back on their feet after struggling with HD games, but they are just like back on top, and it's very obvious that Western studios are struggling. I mean, I don't know. I think. Like... Well, I think what we're seeing with the uh, Japanese games is that they're kind of like whole smaller games, smaller budgets. You know, have faster I release games, schedule. But smaller, well, okay, I mean, smaller games in ca- c- comparison to like a Spider-Man Two, mainly in the scale of like budget. Yeah. That's what I'm kind of stating. Mm-hmm. Is um, you know, these like smaller experiences, but not small experiences. I don't want to say that. Smaller budgets. That's the big thing. They're kind of like that's paying off in dividend. Where you're seeing that these big games are struggling to make back their costs because they keep going bigger and bigger with their budgets. Well, meanwhile, these Japanese games that always had lower budgets 
are able to say, hey, we we sold two million copies. That is way more than what we projected. And I think you're gonna just yeah. you're just seeing the West in general being much more embracing and like you know embrace these Japanese games and publishers a lot more, especially Capcom and Square Enix. And you're just you're you're seeing overall that these games yeah. are doing much better than they ever have in the and, past. Yeah, they really go for like more artistic style. Like even Seven Rebirth isn't going for like photorealism. It's got its own art style, and I think having that for some of those games helps with like budgets and stuff. No, I for sure agree. Uh, I I do think I think Capcom's gonna have the best year. I think just. It feels like this whole, um, the last few years has basically just been the era of Cap God, and I think that's just going to continue with Dragon's Dogma 2, and a bit more games that are coming out of them that we can definitely discuss. Fusion, what about you? What do you think? Who do you think is going to have the um, best year? I think Sega's, like, cheating, because I think... <laughs> I think they all really have the best year locked up, I'll be honest. Yeah, I, I don't agree. Think they can, I don't think you can beat Sega. They have, what, Infinite World, Persona 3 Reload... Unicorn Overload just came out. Is that Sega? Yep. That's Sega. Yeah. Like, those yeah, three games, I like, genuinely don't think a single other publisher will reach on. So, just for, like, the fun, I really think, like, like Ubisoft would have a good pair if Star Wars Outlaw delivered because you have the Lost Crown and Star Wars Outlaw that, this year, which would be good. Rumor, rumor but you also have Skull Bones. Is, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But rumor is Red is this might be this year, too. It's most likely this year. I assume oh that's this year. It might be EA's year. Let's just put it on the oh, map. Yeah, okay. That's not uh, my man brought up EA. See the boy coming back. Dragon Age is gonna deliver. Tales of Kanzara or whatever, however you say it. that. Metroidvania, like they're slept on right now. <laughs> Listen, what hey, if Fusion, Street, I want to believe Street in Dragon Age. Comes out of nowhere and hits holiday. Skate. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we've we've. I mean, okay, we'll get. You know, we can just. Di- well, actually, before we continue into EA Moon, do you, who do you think Sega is gonna definitely have is going to be a high contender? And I think even putting aside like my Persona metaphor bias, I their lineup is just a really solid. And we're already seeing it with Unicorn and Reload. They're scoring very well, even for like a lot of their non fans. So they're definitely in the running. Um, I guess we can kind of count. <laughs> Bandai Namco and FromSoft because they're going to have Elden Ring this year, so obviously that's going to do really well. Um, yeah, FromSoft is under... Well, they're not under Bandai Namco, but it's published, so like we count yeah. it as a Bandai Namco joint. And I'm just... I'm flipping through like my 2024 app right now, seeing what other... I'll be honest. I, think, <laughs> I forgot. I think outside of that, it's going to be the year of like the smaller studios, because I'm looking at all these 2024 games, and they're all like these double-A games, indie games... And they all have a lot of promise, but they're not part of any of these big, usual third-party uh, developers and publishers that we usually talk about. So it might be the year of the indies and the smaller AA games. Yeah, I, I think that, and then I do think Sega. I mean, they're, they're making SMT5 Vengeance, and apparently that's just like, you get the original game, and then you also get like just another, another campaign. A, like another full-length, like 80-hour campaign. I do think it'd be fun to discuss Konami, though, because they have a lot of stuff. Oh well, 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 we'll talk about it. You always get ahead of me. <laughs> um, we're, we're on the same wavelength. Wolf. Never say that again. That's a scary. I thought. will. I will say I completely forgot. Metaphor was this year because I keep because I keep putting up the energy that it's gonna get delayed. <laughs> it's not rated. It's rated now. Yeah, rated for a delay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, let's get into the actual discussion. So we have all these companies. I, I want to start off with EA since Fusion so diligently brought up their incredible year, apparently. Um, apparently, So last year they did actually have a weird year, to say the least. So they've had some highs with Dead Space Remake at an 89, Jedi Survivor 84 despite launch issues. Apparently F one twenty three was a banger at an eighty five. Hell yeah! But and then you have Madden twenty four, the story of Madden sixty six, and then Immortals of Avium, which we know the story of that game. It, it, EA had a very like up and down twenty twenty three. But looking into the twenty twenty four, uh, Fusion kind of mentioned a few of these: Tales of Kanzara Zao. That's in April. Uh, a African mythology looking um, Metroidvania. Metroidvania. Yeah, which is one I'm really interested in. And then F124 in May. Hell yeah, F1 fans. I know you're pumping your fists up in the air right now. Uh, Dragon Age Dreadwolf, no date. And then EA College Football, which is NCAA. 
NCAA. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> I do think EA college football could be a banger. I'm starting to get in that fusion hope. There's I no, might pick this I, game up. It might be a banger. <laughs> I want to believe for you guys. Like, personally, I'm fine. It's either or for me. But, like, I want to believe for Fusion's sake and for Bob's sake. Because I know y'all love your college football. But it's like, is, I feel like there's a chance that this is just going to be a Madden reskin. I want to believe. I want to believe. Um, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Great commentary, Fusion. <laughs> Um, I no, there's still part of me that's like they could really madden this up, but like it's genuinely every week they deliver good news. And I'm like, I never thought an EA sports game could do this. Like I'm just so used to EA sports games just being just depressed, but like I feel like every week they're just putting out something about the college football game that I'm like, wow, they're actually doing this for once. Yeah, the full reveal isn't until May though, right? Yeah, May. Yeah, which is weird. They kind of tease like, oh yeah, here's the game. We will reveal it in May. It's like, just reveal it now. <laughs> and there's a good chance it comes out in June. So like, it might be a reveal and then out next month type stuff. I I hope it's a, a good win right, for you guys' sake. Because the last one was like, what, 2012, 2013? I forget exactly. 2013. 2013 yeah so it's been a while this has kind of been a hiatus for this franchise i do i, I do uh, i i am like skeptical obviously you know it very much could be another madden reskin but also it seems like they're marketing this in a much more different way to facilitate the idea that hey this is something different from madden we are doing something completely different this is going to be its own joint um and the other one that i'm a lot more skeptical on <laughs> Dragon Age Dreadwolf, listen, Fusion, I know you believe in Bioware. I know, but I have to say it right now. Their last two games were Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem. <laughs> and most of the talent at Bioware that made that godlike Mass Effect trilogy and the Dragon Age games and all that, they left. I want to believe that this game like is a banger. I'm just putting some skepticism out there. Can I say something controversial? I'll go for it. All right. I like Anthem. I don't love Anthem. I don't think I think Anthem deserves most of its critiques. But like, there is very few games, multiplayer wise, that has better combat than Anthem. Flying around in that game, like just landing anywhere on the planet with your friends, it's so good. Like the combat is so good. The story and everything else, trash. <laughs> like not great. Not great writing. Not like. A lot of issues, and it wasn't the game that they portrayed it to be with the very first Anthem release. I mean, the trailer, the reveal, that was amazing, and like one of the best reveals of all time. But like, I think Anthem is, gets hated way too much. Here's the thing. I will agree with you on the combat in the sense of, like, it was extremely fun flying around. Like, flying around is awesome in that game. And I think that, like, the overall shooting felt good. But it kind of ran into that live service shooter issue where you were just kind of just shooting the same enemies and it was the same loot and it was the same like numbers going up. And to me, I'm just like, I, I lost interest in that game so quickly. And I remember feeling so depressed afterwards, like, damn, Bioware, no, not my boys. The world, they shut up like disgustingly good lore. I mean, like they went in on like the world building and everything and they just didn't, it just didn't deliver. We were supposed to get Anthem next. <laughs> and that just went away. I have hope for um, Mass Effect Four. Mass Effect Four is like five years from now. We can't yeah, think about that right now. Hope, though. Listen, we can have hope if Dragon Age Dreadwolf is good and it sells well. <laughs> Which right now, like I'm, I'm hoping it's good. I just right now I haven't seen much evidence. Maybe they show it off in this reveal <laughs> and it fucking blows me away, and I'm like, holy shit, this game's a banger. Like, so you still haven't back. seen this game. Like, other than leaks, we have not seen this video game. <laughs> Which is insane, because it's supposed to come out this year. So it's like, they announced it, like, five years ago, and they were like, all right, well, that's all. <laughs> You're kidding. They showed that, like, early dev footage at, like, an EA uh, play at one point, I remember. And I was just like, <laughs> show the game. <laughs> why, why do we, we don't need to see the early dev footage. Like, show the actual video game that we're going to be playing. It can't be that far off. No, I Apparently think it was that far off. 
when those leaks came out about two years ago and people were like, this is going to be the worst game of all time, I think they might have had to genuinely pivot hard. And they've just been hard at work, probably crunching, 60 hour work weeks, and they're just like, we got to figure this out. Like, we got to, they might have 180 on a bunch of stuff. And they're just like, it was, they're just working, working, working. It was originally a live service uh, game, or at least it was going to have live service elements. I remember that in one of the leaks. I think it was a Trier leak. And I feel like they definitely pivoted away from that. And the menus were so, like, so live service-y. Like, you would have your dragon, like, your character, and there was purple and, like, rares. And, like, were, like I remember it being bad. People were, like, so mad at it. And that was, like, 2022 or maybe even longer. So I'm like, I wonder if they genuinely took that and was like, hey, people hate us. Let's not do this with their franchise. Because this is nothing like the other Dragon Age games. Uh, what about EA's other games? games they got a uh, skate as a uh, fusion mentioned earlier but they also have black panther and also the iron man game yeah they have a lot of uh, some um, marvel stuff despite apparently wanting to move away from licensed games <laughs> and then all the star wars stuff yeah jedi the, the next jedi game isn't until a few years so that's yeah. something to not even think about right now i am curious about the skate game apparently it is live service or at least i remember something about that uh, I don't know if they pivoted away from that the same way they did with Dragon Age. I feel like they're just going to stick with the live service elements. I really hope it's good for the skate fans, because skate fans have been dying out in the desert. Fusion, are you a skate guy? Um, I wouldn't say skate guy. I always preferred Tony Hawk, but like I've owned and played the skates and enjoyed my time with them. Yeah, I, I, I do think we see it this year. I think we actually see like a full-on trailer reveal like maybe an actual name for the game other uh, unless it's just called skate full on reboot title style I, I just the black panther and the iron man game are more curious to me i feel like those are still a couple years out oh yeah i think because the iron man games the dead space team and dead space yeah. like just came out so i still think iron man's like years off which is yeah why did they have to work on a licensed game just remake dead space 2 and maybe after That's Iron Man, they'll go back to Dead Space 2. And then you have, obviously, your, your Madden will come out again this year, and your FIFA. Like, you'll have your soccer Is, game. And <laughs> will it be good this year? Madden uh, 25? Doubt it. Really doubt it. <laughs> I hope, <laughs> actually... Is because Madden used to be decent because they had competition from NCAA. They, like, kept each other honest because they were different dev teams. So, like... They genuinely, like, even though they're the same EA and everything, there was some internal competition where it's like, hey, Madden, we can't be Madden and make a worse game than NCAA, and NCAA can't make a worse game than Madden. Like, they genuinely, like, kept each other honest and was in check. And now that college football hasn't been around for 11 years, Madden has just gotten worse year after year after year. So I'm interested in if this NCAA comes out and then, like, really delivers, if Madden has to, like, like, they get some fire under them, like, they're on the hot seat a little bit. I hope so. I really hope so. Um, but yeah, EA, that's kind of like what we think. Do we think they're going to have a good year? I feel like it's going to be a kind of a standard year out of them. I think it truly depends how good Dragon Age is. Exactly. And they're going to sell uh, games because all the, the games that are like mid still sell millions of copies. Oh yeah. All their sports oh, yeah. games sell. M Madden's years. always in the top 10. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so they're, they're finding it from a sales standpoint. <laughs> I really hope EA stays in business, guys. Like, that's the most, like, obvious thing. Like, don't worry. <laughs> um, and then we'll talk about Take Two. I was actually looking at their portfolio um, for the podcast, and let me tell you, these guys don't do anything. <laughs> Take Two is very much a Daddy Rockstar, please help us <laughs> type studio. Uh, publisher, I mean. The, they had Kerbal Space Program 2 last year, and that didn't even get a score on Open Critic, so who knows how people thought about that one. Apparently positive, I don't know. But this year, all we know is No Rest for the Wicked, which is being published under Private Division, which I know, Fusion, you're really excited for that one. Yeah, very, very excited. Kind of makes me upset that they um, even have any part to do with this game, I'll be honest, but... Um... <laughs> Good for them, I guess. <laughs> I mean, Private Division, that label doesn't really like. Yeah, I don't metal. think. I don't think anyone sees Private Division and thinks Take Two. 
Exactly. Yeah. They, they, I feel like that's kind of why they created Private Division. It's almost like, a, hey, guys, it's uh, not us. <laughs> it's just a Private Division, you know. They're doing a Game Freak game soon. Yeah, they should. Hey, they have yeah. Game Freak one. I forgot to actually put that uh, here. I'm glad you that's mentioned 2026, it. 2026, though, I think. Oh, did they outright say it's 2026? I think they said it was something like that. It was very far. Yeah. What's Game Freak doing over there? They got to work on Pokemon games. Let's get another buggy Pokemon game out. Come on, guys. Let's let's speed it up. I think they have like a third team that kind of like makes a little town hero. Yeah, that worked out well because that game sucked ass. <laughs> I bought it and it was so bad. <laughs> I'm glad you bought it, but I just <laughs> thank God you're, you're our man on the inside for little town hero. <laughs> Um, At least it's not multiverses. Grand Theft Auto 6, it seems like they're going to very much coast on this one uh, for 2025. Are they going to just like have a quiet year for 2024, basically just put all their marbles yeah. into 2025? Yeah, because they can coast on GTA 6 for a decade if they really want to. And they exactly. can coast this entire year with the hype of GTA 6. That's all they need this year. Oh, yeah. They just be like, GTA 6 is coming, guys. That's all they have to say. And no one it's will not care like GTA you're not 5 and Red Dead have stopped selling either. Yeah, GTA 5, Red Dead, they'll still sell insanely well. They I mean, sell like $5 million per quarter. <laughs> they'll have a 2K this year in the WWE. They just released WWE. Apparently, I really, I really hope NBA 2K 25? Or do they only do 24 now? Isn't 24 just dropped as well? Uh, 24 was last year. Oh. How does basketball work? <laughs> I forget how they actually do the years for basketball because I know Madden's always a year ahead. It's the same for it's the same in Madden, all the sports games. Okay, so it's NBA 2K25 this year. Yes. I really hope it's good, guys. <laughs> Which I, I think if you ask uh, 2K fans, they're like, yeah, that franchise kind of went to shit too. <laughs> yeah, um, not, not good. There was uh, they did reveal. Or at least say they were working on a Bioshock 4 a number of years ago. Do we see that this year? Um, see? Maybe. I, I, I question it. Because I'm like... I feel like it's been longer that we've seen... Like, they've announced Bioshock 4 than, like, Judas at this point. And it's like... You gotta show a trailer at this point. Or at least, like, just a teaser at, like, a press conference. Like, hey, Bioshock is coming. Now, granted, we don't know when it's coming. Maybe it's a 2026 joint. I kind of think it's 2025. I don't know. I just feel like that's the case. Call it a gut feeling, but it is one of those games where it's like, where is that? And there's maybe also Jeff Keighley has it. Maybe Jeff Keighley. Jeff Keighley has a lot of things. Let's <laughs> he's got that summer game pass this year. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, that was a news story I just skipped over. Um, Summer Games Fest got a date, so thank God. It's on Friday, by the way. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why he does his shows on Thursdays. I'm glad we're switching to Friday now. Um, Civ 7, that's kind of one that Beef Hammer somehow believes is going to come out this year. A lot of people do. I really hope so, because I fucking love Civilization. I just don't know if it's going to be like... I don't know if it's ready. But it's also like, it's been like almost a decade since Civ 6. So maybe they're at that point where it's like, hey, we've been working on it long enough. Now we're going to release Civ 7. Um, and then also Hangar 13, the Mafia Studio. I do kind of question what they're doing at the moment. They kind of just went quiet after Mafia 3. But yeah, there's like Max Payne 1 plus 2, Borderlands 4. There's other stuff that is definitely coming out. But it seems like Take 2 is overall going to be another quiet studio for this year. Unless they decide to reveal, I don't know, fucking Bioshock 5 and say that that releases before Bioshock 4. <laughs> I want a studio to do that, like a big AAA studio to do that one day. Yeah, it's um, probably... Um, which is funny. Well, it, it's just funny that when I was looking through these studios, the same as you, it was actually so... Like, even EA and stuff, they have way less games coming out than I thought. Like, I was like, wow, these publishers are kind of doing nothing. I mean, like, it's just a trend in the industry in general. They kind of rely less on, like, these small AA games filling out their catalog for the year. And more, hey, we just need one big heavy hitter for the year. Or at least one or two. Yeah. Um, you, Your favorite company, Ubisoft Fusion, <laughs> they um kind of had an average 2023, a lot of 70s for, like, Crew, Mirage, Avatar, Just Dance, you know, just, like, a kind of whatever year. 
Um, this year, so far, they had Prince of Persia The Lost Crown, which was amazing. Love that game. And then Skull and Bones, <laughs> which is just an immediate, like, oh, that one was not good. <laughs> so right now, they kind of have X Defiant and Star Wars Outlaws and also Assassin's Creed Red, which is also supposedly this year. Do we think any of these land? Are they going to be good games? How Why did you remind me that X Defiant exists? Oh, I love X Defiant. I don't. <laughs> hey, Fusion's the one that wrote down X Defiant. He loves that game. No, I don't. No, I actually am one of the people who thought I'm. I do not jive with the combat in that game. I do not think it feels good. But um, yeah, that was not a good game. It's just because they're gonna. Um. Like it's gonna, it's they're they're genuinely like, at least in the competitive scene, like people are excited for that game. Like it has a very like, a lot of Call of Duty pros are like in on it, so like it has a competitive side to it. I so I think Ubisoft is actually like very wanting it to do well, which is why like it's taken as long as it has since the last open beta because they want to get it right. But I don't have much faith. Like I said, I did not. Think, at least on console, the last time I played it, I did not think it felt very good. Yeah, I I don't really think X Define is gonna make enough of a splash to really like turn heads at least in the way like a hell divers is turning heads at the moment uh i am more curious on star wars outlaws and uh, assassin's creed red do we think both of those land yeah, yeah land, i mean as in land this year or as in land this good game both um i think outlaws is this year red's not and i think outlaws will be very good and if outlaws is good that's a success for ubisoft in my like the whole year that and be- prince of persia like that's all they need is Outlaws going to be a better, like, open-world space game than Starfield? Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, that's not saying a, or setting a high bar. <laughs> but it's a fun comparison. I just don't want to think about Starfield right I now. I mean, <laughs> Assassin's Creed Red is, at least according to their report, supposed to be out by the end of the fiscal year, which is March next year. So obviously it's going to be some kind of holiday game. I mean, I doubt they're releasing it in, like, February, March next year. I mean, you say that, but like a lot of companies have been starting to do that lately, and it kind of works out th- about the same. I don't think the holiday rush is as like ne- much of a necessity as it once was back in like the PS3 generation. Or no, anything. I would agree with that, but the fact that it has the Star Wars label on it, they want to get all those moms and dads and grandpas to be like, look, honey, the new Star Wars game, and get that for Christmas. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I mean, Star Wars Outlaws, I do think, is this holiday, but Code Red... Code Red? Oh, wait, it... I, I forgot we were talking about Red, never mind. <laughs> oh, okay, you were thinking of Outlaws. Okay, yeah, Outlaws, yeah, no, I think we're all on the same page that it's this year. Um, now, the granted, will it be good? I hope so. I thought the demo looked fun. Uh, I thought the shooting looked a little jank, but everything else looked great. Um, and then Assassin's Creed Red, I feel like everyone is pretty, like... Do you, do you think there's going to be, like, a burnout on these Assassin's Creed open world games by the point time we get red? I mean, uh, cause, I mean the... if that would have happened, that would have happened with Mirage. And even Mirage did okay. Well, Mirage Honestly, was uh, more of a classic uh, Assassin's Creed style. I'm talking more about the Valhalla Odyssey and whatnot. I mean, this is the Assassin's Creed of those bands that I'm the most interested in, and I will play it, so... You're such a wee bench. God I mean, damn. Still, yeah. <laughs> By the time this game comes out, it will be four or five years since the big Valhalla. So I actually think people will eat this up. Yeah, it would be like about you four eat this years. up, Fusion? Yeah, people will probably eat this up. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's, it's, been, it's more four, mystical, it's, like yokai and stuff as well. It's been four years since Valhalla. Now, granted, Valhalla had like 20 DLC expansions, <laughs> but it, it always felt like Valhalla was like out last year, but it's like, no, that was just the expansion that came out last year. I do think Code Red is going... Is it Code Red or is it just Red? I think it's right just now Red. It's just, right, right now, I think it's just called Red, and I don't know if that's yeah. the official title or not yet. Code Red in the mouth, okay. <laughs> Oh, that's why I kept getting it confused. <laughs> He's got the wrong new Code Red in his mind. I kept thinking about, dude, not new code red, shout outs. But no, I mean, I, I'm very curious to see how this lands, like, Metacritic, open critic wise. I do think there is going to be a slight burnout at this point, especially if they try to go for an even bigger map. Do you think they go even bigger than Valhalla? Or it's like, okay, we're going to I think down they heard the criticisms of Valhalla, so they probably are going to be scaling back in some way. I really hope so, because. 
<laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, I, mean, Valhalla, I thought it was big enough with Odyssey when I played that. I and saying, then I heard I mean, Valhalla Odyssey's, was even bigger. I think Odyssey is bigger than Valhalla. Oh, is it? But that's the scary part. This is the Odyssey team. It's the scary oh. part, but the great part, because I love Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So this could be like banger. I mean, um, Valhalla was also really well liked by a lot of people. I hear just like it's so long that like, and the story yeah. wasn't like a whole great. Because like, isn't Assassin's Creed Odyssey <laughs> long, but like it's got a decent story? Yeah, to... you know the funny part. You know how I remember telling you guys like, Valhalla has one of the worst endings ever. No spoilers, but it's just really bad. And like, I spent seventy-seven hours in that game, got to an ending, and felt like wanted to die. I was like, I played the whole game for that. <laughs> My buddy just played through the last two weeks. I was like, you don't need to start this game, I promise you. He started it. He beat it yesterday. He sent me a text at like 11 p.m. He said, is that really the ending? I said, yep. He said, why did I do this? I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, why? like I told you not to play it. You, you, you mainline for 60 hours. You get to the ending and you're just like, this is terrible. It still reminds me of that Far Cry 5 ending where I was just like, oh, that's how it ends, huh? <laughs> I was I so the mad at the end of it. No shot. Wait, wait, what? Love is a hard, love is a strong word, but yeah, I thought I lo- we'll get in. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's a, no, that's no that's spoilers, a Far Cry but... Five food coma, guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, catch that in twenty twenty seven. I, I mean, Far Cry, Far Cry Seven reveal release anytime soon. I would love a reveal. I love the Far Cry reveals. I hope so. I mean, Who's the celebrity who- this time? Yeah, I was about to ask Chris you. Pratt. I mean, listen, you say that it's a joke, but Chris Pratt has a possibility. <laughs> Chris Pratt no, as think... a villain would actually be kind of fun. I think you get, I like, think that... Pedro Pascal. Uh, Pedro Pascal Pedro would be Pe- also fun. But that kind of leans nice. too much into the what Giancarlo Esposito did. I want... um, God, what's his name? Uh, Walter White. Uh, uh, Brian, Brian Cranston. Cranston. I think Brad Grant's would be kind of sick, honestly. I mean, we've seen him play a villain before. It's like, hey, uh, maybe we can do this again. I keep forgetting now because there's been so many Far Cry leaks. Is Far Cry 6, I know what, was Far Cry 7, is it for sure in Alaska? Or did they pivot uh, to it? The, it's now going to take place on an island, like Far Cry, like another island I game. I don't think we got any like definitive leaks about like setting. We just got that Tom Henderson article that was very like, Oh, it's going to be like 72 hours. You're saving your family. Oh, yeah. But that didn't have a setting. Well, now they, I'm reading that article right now. And it does say that it was a fictional tropical island called Kimsan. Oh, okay. I guess I missed that. It will be the Yellow Sea next to Korea. All right. So who's Ooh, a Korean Korea. actor that we can use? Yeah. So Daniel as far Day Kim, away from go. Alaska, the, for, at, at one point they were going like full, like Far Cry 7 is going to be set in Alaska and all that. And I was hyped. I was like, Alaska, that sounds fun. But I mean, this no, no, will... aren't they doing like some sort of like live service survival game thing? That's like a multiplayer Alaska? game also leaked, but I don't know. Oh, yeah. But I think, was that canceled? Or am I we're thinking of something else? I think of the Blizzard survival game. Does Skull and Bones get DLC this year? Skull and Bones gets shut down this year. <laughs> <laughs> Skull and Bones doesn't exist at the end of the year. <laughs> that game is a fucking it. joke. No, they can't. They could if they were gonna fix it, they wouldn't have delayed they it like twenty times. It. They only got it out because of the government. They're done. They they would not touch the video game again. Well, again, Trisha, to... you say that, but we've said this before. It's like if they wanted that to be the case, then why didn't they review like release it in like um the first release date, which was like um november of 2022 because i'm sure they wanted to like make profit of some sort so they were like let's at least make it decent enough where people buy that launch i know someone who bought it i'm like why did you buy this game yeah it's like who are these people you you know that are buying skull and bones at launch (laughs) you're like suicide squad was a new story nobody cared about skull and bones (laughs) skull and bones kind of just came out everyone's like oh thank god it's out (laughs) I will say, I just got to roast it. Um, Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake, that's never going to come out. I don't believe that. <laughs> I, 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 that thing's going to get canceled soon. At least you would hope, because I don't. that last showing was awful. And I'm kind of just like, they switched developers, so maybe it is going to be good the next time we see it, but I don't really have any faith in it. And the Splinter Cell remake, I actually do think we see this year. But I think it was uh, in that leak that it was 2025. It is kind of funny with Ubisoft. We basically know their slate. <laughs> 
they don't, don't really have any surprises. Yeah, they got me. So not, I mean, the, they also have the Division Three, but I don't, I don't, I don't know how far off that is. That's pretty far off, I'd assume. Because Ubisoft massive, that they're doing Outlaws. Ubisoft games are good. Bro, why do you keep pushing this narrative? <laughs> I feel like we just started one of bunch of good video games right there. We took we we took okay. EA. We're like, <laughs> we go you be solved. We just talked about a bunch of good stuff. Do they have a good twenty twenty four? Are you thinking like, hey, they as a Ubisoft fanatic, <laughs> you're you're gonna be happy with it? I will be extremely happy as a Ubisoft fan if Outlaws just as good. I hope so. Because I, really like, I, I need to, I need to get two points of fortune. Shot. Like I I know how good that like people say that game is. So like I still have that to play as a Ubisoft title, and then it's like I'm gonna have hopefully Star Wars Outlaws. And like for me, that's that's a lot. That's good. Could Outlaws be late yeah. summer? They announced the date on like May fourth, and it's kind of like August or September. I could see a September. That actually. I only think they do that time. if Red is also this year. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if Red's not this year, they want it like November or like around In, the, more holiday. Red could be the PS5 Pro launch title. Stop with the PS5 Pro launch title. The Hollow with the <laughs> Xbox launch title. Oh yeah, I forgot they had the, the Series X launch title as Valhalla. It's like, what the hell are I mean, we doing here, guys? That game does look very good, very pretty, but... Your obsession with Ubisoft has to be studied fusion. No, <laughs> it's not, I mean, not. I think that's just a like the Assassin's Creed games look great. I mean, hey, I, I, I believe it. Um, no, I do. What, you never believe anything I say. So, <laughs> next up, Square Enix. Um, I, I want to move through these last few companies a bit faster. Uh, Square Enix 2023 overall good year. Uh, they had Octopath, Final Fantasy 16. Star Ocean. Now they did have Forspoken, which great game by the way. <laughs> but this year they're looking to have a very interesting year. So so far they had Foam Stars, which is a goatee contender, I think, for a lot of people, including myself. And then they had Rebirth, kind of a smaller underground title. No, no one's really talking about that one. Um, and then from there, it's a lot of uh, Saga, Emerald Beyond, not really feeling that one at all, I'll be honest. Uh, yeah, Visions of um, Mana. Oh, uh, Saga's, Saga's kind of like a very niche thing. I haven't gotten into it, but the people that like it really like it. Are oh, yeah, no. That's for sure the case. It's just this new one hasn't really looked interesting to me. I, I looked at like gameplay and I was like, ooh, the, this graphically is like definitely their B team. C team, almost. Um, the Visions of Mana, which actually looks a lot more exciting. That's like a summer joint. Which we thought it was going to be Game Pass, and then they were like, oh, no, actually, it's not. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then... For now. For now. I mean, listen, you Game Pass folks. <laughs> um, then we have... Bench, I need your help with this. Uh, Dawn Trail? FF14? Yeah, the, the next uh, Final Fantasy fourteen expansion is Summer, which I am looking forward to and eager, eagerly anticipating, although I got to catch up I'm like two patches behind still. And then you have the FF16 DLC, which honestly could get shadow dropped at PAX, because they're they're hosting a panel for 14 and 16, and I assume we get a trailer for both and more information. I'll be honest, I thought the 16 DLC was out. Oh wait, no, the, the first, first one, one is out. And honestly, That's that was okay. that was a really good DLC. I mean, story wise, just more time in the characters, but combat wise, it was very good. I enjoyed those fights. And then uh, the one I'm actually really excited for is Dragon Quest Three HD 2D Remake. Uh, that game looks incredible visually. Yep. And actually, I've been uh, playing Dragon Quest Three, and it's like, damn, this game actually slaps. So I'm actually really excited to see where the HD 2D Remake, like what they're gonna do with that um, franchise. Yeah. It's like li- a little over Live Alive's length, so maybe like 30ish hours, I think, right? Yeah, the Dragon Quest Three is pretty short. It's like 30 hours, which that is the sweet spot to JRPGs for me. 30 to 40. All JRPGs should hit that length. Yeah, so I, um, think, I think it'll be this year, though. I do think it's... I think whenever the Direct happens, or... The, yeah, I think it'll be there. I could see it as a summer joint. Kind of like a July. Nintendo's a big fan yeah. of that month. Um, And then there are some other games. I think we could just mention them real quick. Kingdom Hearts 4 and Dragon Quest Twelve. Those are not 2024, baby. <laughs> Those it's are not even not 2025. This. Yeah, these are much more lucky. Off. I think there's a okay Kingdom Hearts four. I don't think we're actually going to even see this year. That's like way far off. 
Dragon Quest Twelve, I could see this year because that was revealed a while ago. I could see at least a trailer this year. A trailer yeah. this year, maybe. Yeah, but I'm gonna play Eleven. Eleven's really fucking good. Um, but no, the Dragon Quest is definitely gonna be like having a a big a big 2024 2025 it seems like if dragon quest 12 even hits 2025 which again that's kind of doubtful at this point these these games take a long time to make because I mean, we'll, we'll get the hd the three hd 2d in the meantime though yeah that's definitely gonna hold up for a lot of people but yeah square enix uh w or l year for them i think this is gonna be a good year for them i think with rebirth especially <laughs> The 93 on Metacritic. Yeah, helps Rebirth is off to, yeah. They're off to a good start with Rebirth. Oh, yeah, very good year. They, they well, did stumble at the beginning with Foam Stars, though. Good old Foam Star. I feel like they have a very good chance for them to have the game of the year. Which is like, you put out the game of the year, that's a good year. Wait, yeah. which game do you think is game of Rebirth. the year? Rebirth. Rebirth. <laughs> what, did you think it was Foam Stars, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh wait, I was thinking of Dragon's Dog, but never mind. Oh, well, I mean, we'll get into Dragon's Dogma with Capcom. Uh, they're next up, actually. Wow, good transition, man. Um, so last year, Capcom had a great year outside of Exo Primal, but we don't talk about that. But RE4 Remake, Street Fighter Six were both amazing games. And then this year, so far, we got Apollo Justice Trilogy, which I've been meaning to get around to. I love my Ace Attorney. Uh, and then Dragon's Dogma 2, later this month. And also, they got Kunitsu... Kunitsu... Kun, Kun, Kunitsu, Kunitsu thank you. Path of the Goddess. <laughs> that is this year as well. That's your Overall, Pikmin game for this year. <laughs> you, it will never be Pikmin. <laughs> it's you are not strategy him. like Pikmin, though. You are not him. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. <laughs> but no, I think this is just gonna be another Cap God sweep again. As I said earlier, I, I do think this they're gonna have probably the best year out of the third party publishers. I wouldn't say. Th- best but i do think dragon's dogma 2 is like a 90 plus i think those previews are just so glowing i also think um ace attorney 7 is very probable to be this year Mm. it's kind of with the apollo justice trilogy coming out this year almost gearing up ace attorney fans it's like hey get ready because we're the the next installment in the franchise is coming out very soon i'm not a big fan of that path of the goddess game I feel like I'm You're the not only into it? one alone in that. We can see people liking it, but no, every time that game shows up, I'm like, I'm not liking this at all. And maybe and like, I guess we're going to talk about Pikmin, and I also look at Pikmin, and I don't like Pikmin at all. Oh my I'm god, just... Fusion. You did not have to say that! <laughs> maybe I'm seeing them like the same re- I don't know what it is. I just look at it and I'm like, I don't like what you're giving me. You're I just need to see more. Like I'm not totally it. sold on it, but I'm like, I'm interested enough to at least pay attention to it and when previews and other stars start coming out, I'll pay attention to that, see if it is. And it's on Game, Game, Game Pass. Pass, might as well try yeah. it. Like a Game Pass just... nerd, bro. They don't support devs. Like, no one supports devs anymore. <laughs> I will say, um, I'm kind of with you, Fusion, except I, I keep saying, like, I want to wait for the hands on demo for that game. I want to wait for a developer to go, hey, we're just going to play the game, the HUD on, UI, all that good stuff. And just like we're gonna do like a, a level in the game because I feel like every time they show it, they keep like cutting away whenever oh, it yeah, gets to the gameplay. Like and I'm like, wait, hang on, S- just slow down for a bit because I need to understand what's happening here. Um, also, do you get paid to shit on Pikmin Fusion? Because like no one was, no, like, I don't hate Pikmin. I didn't even, th- I wasn't even thinking about Pikmin, but it's just funny that Moon call it like a, a Pikmin type game and then like. I, mean, I, I, I only call it like that she, because <laughs> that's the only real time simulator I could think of. I was just say, so maybe me, I just don't like real time simulators. I don't know. You are not him. That's all I'll say. You are not Pikmin. <laughs> um, obviously, for 2025, we could see Monster Hunter Wilds, which I assume is going to get a lot of press this year in terms of trailers and reveals and whatnot. Uh, do we think Resident Evil is going to get anything either this year or next? Or uh, Because I there's... would assume. If there's any like smaller projects, it could come out this year. Like a small, like everyone keeps talking about a Code Veronica remake. So if that's a real thing, that could be this year. Something to just tide us over to keep our. They seem to want to be going down the uh, Nintendo route of we gotta have a Resident Evil out every year, kind of like how this, how they say we need a Zelda every year. I can yeah, see. Kinda... Go ahead. I can, I don't see this year honestly, but like nine maybe next year because like. 2021 was a village. 
And I feel like they've been doing this thing where it's like they put out like seven and then they put out two remake and then they put out eight. I mean, whatever. They do a weird way where they like they put a remaster, then a new game, remaster, new game. You know what I mean? They like they kind of go in a loop. So I feel like you, we would get, I feel like we'd get a Resident Evil 9 before we got like a RE5 remake or a Code Veronica or something. Yeah, and it's also always every two years so that we get a big boy Resident Evil game. So. That does fit with the schedule to be in 2025. Bandai Namco. Um, one of my favorite screw Pragmata, huh? Oh, Pragmata. Uh, that's not coming out. That's not a real game. <laughs> yep. Uh, anyways, Bandai Namco. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I really wanted to play Pragmata. I think it has a cool vibe. It's very Kojima vibes, but I was gonna say it, it, when it got there. revealed, everyone was like, "Is this Death Stranding?" <laughs> like, what's yeah. happening? I I just uh, can't get over the last trailer they had for it where they just said it got delayed again. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I think that's like twenty twenty five, if we're lucky. If we're lucky, yeah. Uh Bandai and Epco, one of my favorite publishers, personally. Uh they are looking like a pretty decent year, all things considered. Uh Tekken 8, which was amazing. Uh JJK Curse Clash, which was bad. Uh Little Nightmares 3, Fusion, big fan of uh the developer for this one. <laughs> Yeah, sorry like, for any Little Nightmares fans. This is going to be the worst one. <laughs> what? You're so adamant about this game being bad. I mean, like, what? You, you like Little Nightmares, don't you? Um, No, not much, actually. Oh, so I've, the I've... Who do you have the authority to start roasting them? <laughs> because it's super massive. The, they didn't make the other games. This is super massive's first time with a Little Nightmare game. So, Maybe like, people like, like the other Little Nightmares games. I'm saying they're going to learn now to hate the Little Nightmares games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, I have some faith. Supermassive made Until Dawn. That's a good game. Yeah, 2014. 15. Come on, man. Whatever it was. <laughs> That's their peak 10 years ago. Uh, Sandland. This is what I'm actually much more anticipating due to the untimely passing of Akira Toriyama. This is kind of like one of the last games he worked on, and I'm into the aesthetic, and the last trailer and showcase for it looks awesome, so I'm like, you know what, I'm much more interested in checking this one out. Though I'm going to wait for reviews. That's April, I think, so we're yep. a bit of ways. Dark Pictures Anthology, Fusion, it's back! <laughs> Your yeah. boys! Like, why, why actually are Bandai, like, why do they work with them? Can we talk they about sell it? Well. They sell well. That's no, the who? <laughs> who is buying this? Uh, people buy them and people like them. People liked um, what was it, House of Ashes? I think uh, I, I think House of Ashes is like the best reviewed one. I think. Like your yeah, best reviewed probably is a sixty-eight. Fusion, I think you're in the minority here. There's I think no way I'm in the minority. There's just no way. There's no I way. think as like cheap horror flick, like you put it on for some friends, you screw around, make some choices. Like, you're, it's a Taco Bell game. You know, you don't think about it afterwards, but it's fun in the moment. I think of Taco Bell more than I think of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, man, that cheesy gordita crunch, exactly. I think about that way more than anything. Uh, so House of, Ash, House of Ashes is sit, currently sitting at 73. 73? Yeah, Look that's the that. best one. That's uh, positive. Let me, <laughs> that's let me, let me double check. Maybe, I'm, maybe I was wrong about that. Let me look at Little Hope here. Okay, so Little Help it. also has, has a 73. Oh, nice. They're really consistent. Uh, what else? <laughs> you are the such devil a in hater. Me. <laughs> oh, wait. Devil in Me was 72. Mm. I think, How about uh, Amanda Madon? Madon? Is that yeah, the one? Madon. Yeah, Madam, yeah, Madam Madon was the first one. Uh, 71. Oh, wow. They just go lower. That's great. Great for them. No, Madam no, actually, they've been the going first up. One. Yeah, that yeah. was the first one. I mean, so I know. I'm more, yeah, my um, Point. So, so with this trajectory, they're gonna be hitting a seventy-five with the next one. Look at that improvement. Good for them. Um, uh, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is one I'm really excited for, but that's probably gonna be most likely a sale game. That's gonna have like a roster of like a hundred characters. I can't fucking wait this for year. that. Yeah, most likely this I think, year. I, I think it's this year. I, I think so. Yeah, and then Shadow of the Earth Tree, which. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> I hope that's good. <laughs> oh Game man, the uh, no, it's DLC. It's not allowed. But yeah, I can't fucking wait for that game. All I'm saying, yeah. as like you love and shower the archery so much. If I said, "Hey, Supermassive's working," 
around the game, would you would you be more excited or less excited? What is, no, what is with just, you in this, no, this is a project. This is just, I'm just putting it out there. Would you be more or less excited? Honestly, It's answer. a different game. It's just, a different It's student. yes or no. <laughs> I would be less excited. Okay, okay there. there we go. Well, because, yeah, because you're comparing from software to Supermassive. That is two different leagues. Supermassive would you put, could, like, work with would you a little the, horror. Would you put the Little Nightmares uh, devs on the same level as FromSoft? Don't answer that question. I don't want my feelings hurt. Uh, <laughs> shut up, Bench. No one likes you. Sega. Oh, wait, actually, before we get into Sega, do we, we think Bandai Namco, they're going to have a good year, right? I think looking at this roster, it's going to be a very solid year for them, especially with Shadow of the Earth Tree. I'm looking at it's the funniest thing about looking at this roster is I know I don't think I've ever played a Bandai Namco game really. There's no shot. You have to have played like one of the games. Have you played well, like from soft games, obviously? Um, there's no yeah, way like you years forever ago. Yeah, like okay. at an arcade. Yeah, that's about, a like, Namco game. It's weird that Bandai Namco, like, I just don't care about, I guess, their franchises. Oh, um, Tales of Arise, you played that. That's Bandai Namco. I did play that. It was it did get shelved, but I did play it. You did play it. Come on, man. <laughs> there, there. I mean, Bandai Namco does a lot of like licensed games and mostly like anime stuff. So I understand not being the biggest fan. I love them, but hey, they're my boys. Uh, you Sega, we talked games. Well, yeah, if they're good anime games. <laughs> True. I'm biased. Uh, Sega. We we talked enough about Sega. We we're just gonna go through quickly. I mean, Infinite Wealth, Persona Three, Unicorn Overlord, all good stuff. Uh, Metaphor Refantasio. You guys are really adamant that it's this year, but sticking hard that I don't I don't think it's hitting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sonic X Shadow Generations. Excited for that. Super Monkey Ball could be a good time. I think I'm it's interested to see what the. That's gonna be a review for that one. I think Menace? the reviews are out. Monkey Ball's in June. Oh, it is? He yeah. doesn't know the, about the monkey balls, bro. Come on now. Monkey balls. I saw something on Twitter earlier. I think monkey that previous balls. might be out. And then SMT5 Vengeance. Same day as uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree. I'm getting that one. <laughs> you were not getting that one, Fusion. I don't yeah, like it when you lie. I don't <laughs> know what it is. <laughs> Alright, I gotta talk shit. So, Konami! <laughs> they, uh... SMT is so they... basically harder persona. So, yeah, like... I mean, I will say, looking at Sega's real quick, looking at their lineup, good year. I actually think you guys might be onto something. You're the best year. I don't year. think it. I don't think it's close. I can. I, I can definitely see the argument now. Konami. So we got Contra Operation Galuga, which sucked ass. What is that? Like, it was a Contra game that literally released like last week, and it fucking sucks. That's all you need to know. Uh, they, they they disrespected yet another Konami franchise because these motherfuckers can't do anything right. We have Silent Hill 2 remake, which is probably going to suck ass. We have Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater, which is a one-to-one -one remake, and they're somehow going to fuck that up because they fucked up a fucking re-release because they can't do anything right. You have Silent Hill F, which is probably not even this year. Same with Township. And then the Suikoden in Remasters, which I actually think is going to be good. They, 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 there's no way they could fuck that up. Konami's not that fucking useless. I'm sorry. I just have to talk shit about how garbage of a company Konami is and how they literally have some of the best IP and franchises ever made, but they just can't fucking do shit with them. I think Metal Gear and Silent Hill could be good. I, I mean, listen, maybe Metal Gear, because it's literally one-to-one -one of one of the best games ever made, but somehow they'll fuck it up. I promise you, they will somehow fuck it up. And then, Look at so, that a secret ending. <laughs> just throw it in there. Yeah, for real. <laughs> and with Silent Hill, like, Fusion, your deal with Supermassive is me with Blooper Team. It's like, they haven't made anything good. Why are they on Meta Silent Hill? <laughs> what are they doing? It's like a good experiment. Did the medium review better than any of the... No, I got Xbox. The medium's a 75. They're beating. They are beating <laughs> Supermassive over here. You know what? I refrain all my comments. I respect your hatred for Supermassive because <laughs> of my hatred for Blooper Team. <laughs> Uh, Koei Tecmo, I don't really have much to say. Rise of the Ronin, it seems to be their only thing in development. They have some other stuff, but nothing like substantial enough to really discuss if they're going to have a great or bad year or whatever. Uh, CD Projekt, what are you thinking about that, Fusion? Th th those are your boys. Yeah, but there's not a single thing coming from them this year. I can promise you that. So. <laughs> Do you think any of this uh, comes in the next two years? Uh, like the yes. remake? I mean, I'm... 
I'm alone, but I genuinely think um, Witcher 4 could be next year. No. no okay. That's, that's I'm alone not... in it. I said I'm alone in it, but I genuinely think, like, I Your think time it's between, scale for games is crazy. No, nah, I think it's between holiday. I think it's like a November to May 2026 joint. Like it's somewhere in that stratosphere of months. Next year is 2025. I know. That's what I just said. I said it would be either the very end of next year or the very early part of 2026. And then it's going to be GTA 6 for game of the year. Yeah, dude. I mean, that's why. That's why you're mad about GTA 6 being 2025 because you don't want GTA I, 6. I feel like if, if, I guarantee if there's a game that could compete, it would be it. So, man, I love you, Fusion. You, you're you're such a dreamer. I respect it. <laughs> it's just I can't imagine Witcher 4 is that close. One remake like has to be before it. No, yeah, one remake. How many times have we? I gotta tell you, remake is after Witcher 4. I, I feel don't... like we have this conversation once a week. It's a remake versus a big, full-fledged Witcher game. Like, there's a clear scale difference. Well, they said it themselves. They're using Witcher 4 assets for the remake of Witcher 1. Yeah, maybe to test out, like, the Witcher 4 assets, see if they work well in the remake, and then they can oh. use those assets more professionally. I'm going to I'm gonna have, to, I'm gonna have to link the article again. <laughs> <laughs> Move, am I crazy, or do I do this every week? I don't think you've done it before. Men's asleep. Uh, Let him sleep. Might be, like, this is crazy. This might be the shit with defend me. Man, there's no defending here? Wait, what are we talking about? How <laughs> Do I not say every week that the Witcher 1 remakes after Witcher 4? You haven't said that in weeks. Well, wait, it's been weeks, though. That's happened, right? <laughs> I can't remember the last time we talked about the Witcher remake. I forgot that existed. Fusion, your argument's falling apart. Bro. It's right here. February 28th. Let's go look. Let's go look in the Plan Discord, guys. Plans can change. I don't see it. You're going to have to post it faster. <laughs> I already forgot. The Embrace. <laughs> the Embrace. <laughs> we got to talk about the Embrace. Uh, man, love this company. Am I right, guys? <laughs> like, literally right now, all we know about them is Alone in the Dark remake, which looks fine, but like it's kind of like stuck in, like right before behind the like big march 22nd game so it's it feels like it's something that's going to get lost in the shuffle and then south park snow day which is just every time anyone talks about that game it's just like man i wish they did another south park rpg like uh stick of truth <laughs> that's pretty much just the full opinion on that game um epic mickey rebrushed which i'm actually really excited for but that's gonna be a while for that one uh that's probably like a late uh this year holiday joint then canceled time splitters. I just put that one to remind us about how this time splitters game was supposedly supposed to be like Fortnite. I so. saw the footage. It was. It was literally Fortnite. I watched it too. It yeah, like, that, yeah. I, maybe they were right in that cancellation. And then someone put Kotor here. Kotor is not the embrace anymore because Kotor is part of Saber. They're we still know, involved. We know who put it there, bro. They're still involved. I mean, are they still involved? Oh yes, yeah, no, they you're still right. Have skin in the game, man, that sucks. <laughs> I was really happy about that. Okay, Fusion, I see, I see what you're saying now. I mean, that was two weeks ago. Hey, there's no sources. Where's the source? Oh, I was expecting. I like, sent it, but who do you think deleted it? The guy <laughs> named Bing in the chat. So let me go pick out of the game. That really narrows it down. <laughs> hey I man, I don't, I don't see a link. I don't see a link here, so... <laughs> My point is we it's talked about it two weeks ago. AI okay, that's the point. It was literally two weeks ago in the Discord. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, I remember this article now. You sent it again. <laughs> Maybe I do have goldfish memory. Not you know, that, Maybe. I don't even remember this conversation. Like this was, it ago. was 16 days ago. I don't remember it at all. Gradget, it's Witcher, so I wasn't really paying attention. Um... And then a couple things I want to bring up real quick before we end off. Valve and Epic, there is this kind of like big battle between the PC launchers, though. I feel like it's kind of winded down to, I don't think Epic is really a player in the PC launcher games. I mean, Fusion, you're a PC gamer. Do you, do you think like there's really a battle anymore? Or is it just like Steam is no, very superior in every way? Um, I'm not one of those people who think like, Every all my games have to be on Steam, but like I definitely think Steam is just a better spot easily. Like even 
I just even right now I love the feature of just wish listing on Steam. Like my Steam wish list right now is just all like the indie games, so I don't forget like about them. Like it's just Epic doesn't have things like that. Epic just gives you free games from time to time that are really good. They should just like fold the fight and just join together or something. They could probably do something really cool. Tim Sweeney recently, uh, that I wanted to put this one in as a joke news story, but apparently he emailed Valve like, oh, you guys suck. And then someone re- responded at Valve like, suck my nuts or something. It was fucking I think it was insane. you mad, bro. Yeah, I think he said you yeah, mad, you, bro. Yeah, you mad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, that kind of just explains that whole battle. I was actually very supportive of Epic in the beginning. I was like, oh, I would like to see some more competition in the PC space. But the problem was that they never actually improved their launcher. Their yeah. launcher was still dog shit. So Epic has just know. been under Tim Sweeney's leadership. I think he's gone now, isn't he? No, he's still there. Oh, yeah. He's like, he's like trying to white knight all these big changes. And some of those changes are warranted, but he does it in a complete ass backwards way. In a way that doesn't make sense, that just hurts the consumer in the long run. He wants to lead a crusade against all these major corporations as a major corporation, so it kind of just comes off as extremely hollow. Yep. And then, I want to end it. Indie games. Uh, Moon kind of said this earlier, but it seems like this is going to be the year of the indies and the double A's. Uh, Do you guys agree? I agree with what I said earlier. (laughs) <laughs> can't really okay moon i know your answer <laughs> i mean i said that last when we started talking about this year i've been on that i think this is the year of the indies i really wants to have credit for everything <laughs> it's oh, not I, insane i probably could go back in the chat log to find this. <laughs> yeah. indie that i'm interested in this year but that's just me that's just you anyway yeah that's you. you have played three of these your entire life you i played journey them. recently you, you hate the you dabs that's you not hate the dabs. You, hate, you hate any journey? small team that's under five people because Wait, they journey's just... not an indie game no journey's an indie game i played that Especially... and i loved it and fusion I mean, has so think playstation you know. no it wasn't it was published by playstation it was published by that game company I mean, if Steve the Diver can be an indie game, I think Journey can. <laughs> the whole, like... Uh, Why is it, like, so associated as a, as a PlayStation game? Because it's not on Because it, exclu- it was exclusive to PS3 when it came out. That's why. Because uh, they were developing on one platform at the time. Um, but no, I mean, like, I, I do very much agree with... Um, it was published by Sony, that's why. Oh. Well, I mean, I'd still consider it an indie game. I feel like that's just getting into the weeds of things. Because like, like yeah, it's developed. Or Annapurna game games. Yeah, I, Annapurna. I I thought it was Annapurna game, but Annapurna was for the PC and iOS version, but the main version is published by Sony. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like if Annapurna and um, what was it, Devolver Digital? If those games, if those games are considered indie, I think like Journey considered indie. At least only, in my opinion. So it's only an indie game when it's on PC because that's the only way they were involved. They published yeah, right. the PC version. Oh, there we go. See. But no, I mean, like, in general, I do agree with Fusion that I think this is going to be a very solid year for indie games. I I will say, uh, right now, the one I want to see, it rhymes with Pilk Song. Don't say his name. Just don't do it. (laughs) (laughs) What? You don't don't want to think about Silk Song? I mean, mean, this year, there's no way it's not. Come on. It definitely is this year. I'm still on that boat. But I was just thinking... About how you say, like, I can't get excited for indies. They never have release dates, blah, blah, blah. Like, you are, you are like, adamant on always saying that. And, like, nine oh, yeah. souls, bro. <laughs> like, can we get it together? This game, no, I'm with you. It's just, like, I just want... Just, I don't, it's just, I hate looking at my wish list. Coming soon is just all across the board. There's no dates, no quarters, no years. It's all just every single indie. They just never give a date, which is, like... It's better in the long run because they they can't commit to dates. And the games don't have like the luxury of saying, hey, our game's gonna come out November 9th. They just usually can't. So like I understand why it happens, but it's so annoying to be so excited for so many indies. We're like, it's March. I said this before, it's March. And none of these indies, I have 25 plus indies that I've been looking forward to this year. None of them have hit yet. I'm like, it's March, and I thought at least a handful would have been out by now. Yeah, no, th- I mean, like, this is why I kind of stick with my I can't get excited for indies because there's never a release date. And, I, I, like, I get excited for an indie a week before release where I'm like, there's no way it gets delayed now. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just like, it, it, I, I love indie games. I fucking love them. I've mostly been playing indie games, like, the last couple of weeks. It's just, like, it's so hard for me to feel that excitement for them 
because of the looseness of their release timing where nine souls was supposedly the first quarter of this year and then they were like ah, i am definitely it's like what <laughs> you just did that before that, that it was it? last it was the last quarter of last year and before that it was q2 of last year it's been like it has moved so much and granted i think they're a kickstarting team so like they have a cool thing where you can see on their website like how much money they've earned and their money's going towards like the recent goal they just hit was like full-on cutscenes for their game so like they've reached that so i don't understand how that works where they're like oh they reached that goal so does that push the game back now because now they're adding cutscenes you know what i mean like when you're a Kickstarter project like that and you're not in early access or going into early access, it probably gets weird where it's like you're still getting money to coming, like flowing in, but you're also trying to upgrade the game at the same time while also getting it out the door. Yeah, it's it's a tough situation. I think a lot of people were kind of saying like, oh man, the AAA gaming bubble is bursting. And then you just saw a lot of like uh, Twitter analysts going like, well, this is why you have to support indie games now. It's like, guys... Indie games are not like where are they gonna get the funding? <laughs> they have their troubles too. Like the whole industry is kind of going through a big restructuring right now. We're kind of seeing the beginning of that. I hope that everything works out for a lot of these teams. I think most of them will be fine. But like you're still gonna see like we see layoffs from indie studios all the time. Like I I just want to point that out. So no one is safe in this current like gaming landscape. But yeah, 2024. Do- would you guys say your opinion on 2024 has changed? Like the idea of like how good this year will be for games since like kind of the onset when going into the year. It definitely uh... feels different in the sense that there's no big franchise thing. Look forward. Final Fantasy was it. And that's all and that's out. And that goes out in the first two months of the year. But besides that, there's no like big IP thing to look forward to in that sense, which just feels a little odd. It definitely has that filler year kind of feeling a little bit, but there's still a lot of great games, but there's just, there's, there's now that final fantasy rebirth is out. There's no like pillar IP game that everyone's kind of looking forward to. Like we'll have grand theft auto next year for that. And some other games now. Uh, but yeah, there just doesn't feel like there's that if one game, everyone's like, like a lot of people are looking forward to. Yeah, I think, um, I thought it would be more of like a hit, hit, hit year like last year, but I think there's going to be definitely be a couple of dry spells. Like after March 22nd, I think there'll be a pretty big dry spell. Like there's Aiden Chronicles, which I'm looking forward to, but I, that's not like a big game. Yeah, I think it's just going to be a lot more dry spells. And honestly, I'm appreciative of that. There's a lot of things I want to get to. Like there's going to be a lot of games coming out, but it's just nothing gigantic. <laughs> there's like, n- last- there isn't like... There isn't like a GTA scale. Well, nothing's a GTA scale. That's a bad example. A rebirth scale. There's not really a rebirth, rebirth scale, scale for the scale. second I mean, what half was of last this year. Like, um, Tears of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom. Alan Wake 2. Spider Man 2. Like, there yeah, was a Spider-Man lot of like 2. stuff on that second half that kind of like really carried 2023. Mario Wonder. But I feel like we exactly. didn't know about those games until like June. Yeah. I, we'll definitely have a clearer picture come June. Like once June happens and it's still like this no big ip no big game kind of thing then we can really start saying yeah this is a uh it's the year of the indie i mean i will I say so i'll happy. say right now <laughs> on open critic we're at a if we if we continued at the pace of the 90 plus games we've gotten like 90 plus rated games we would surpass last year's yeah yeah but, but also it seems like a lot of the last year was kind of brought down by a lot of like kind of stinker games like Gollum and whatnot now, granted, that doesn't really scale into, like, the overall quality of year, but I always thought that was interesting. It's like, oh, yeah, there were a lot of bad games last year as well, but it still was a very high-quality year. But now we look into 2024, it seems like it's going to be a lot more quality, but, like, almost, like, less of a bang, bang, bang year and more of, like, a, hey, there's a banger, like, every month or so, but these aren't, like, the mega IP, like, Spider-Man. This is going to be stuff like Like a Dragon, Final Fantasy Rebirth, which I mean, eh, that's closer to a mega IP than like a dragon. So bad example, but like Dragon's Dogma 2, these aren't mega IPs, but these are games that are going to do really well with the people that are fan bases, the the people that are are fans of these uh, franchises. Yeah, I I will say, you can go ahead, Lynch. No, you can go. Okay, I will say, um, no, I haven't been disappointed so far, but it's been weird to think 
that it's March and Rebirth's the only 2024 game I've played, and I feel like I haven't missed out on much in a sense where it's like, well, beat, I should say, because yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) but as in, like, I haven't, there's not usually like, like last year, early last year, I was like, oh, I got to play Dead Space Remake. I got to play like Resident Evil 4. Like I wanted to be there day one for those games. And like, I did get those games day one. And this year it's more like, I'm finding myself being like, oh, these games, like they're scoring well and everything. And they're like talked about, but it's like, I can wait on most of these games so far where it's like, there's not a game where like, it's like, that's why I won a nine soul so bad. Cause I, if it just shadow dropped tomorrow, I'd be on it type stuff where it's like, I felt like there was so much more of last year of me being, hey, this game's coming out. That's why I'm doing that day. And said so this year so far, it's been like rebirth. That's why I did. But everything else, it's been like, eh, I'll just wait until it goes on the sale. Yeah, like, this year's still going to be very good. It's not going to be like a 2021 year. So. Oh, no, it's already like better than 2021. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I, I will mean... say what I kind of like about this, not having like a big Spider-Man Tears of the Kingdoms level game or even like a God of War Ragnarok or something. It's it kind of makes the conversation of game of the year a little bit more interesting. Yeah, I think it's actually going to be a much more competitive game of the year race uh, this year, just uh, across all the major outlets, because it was kind of just like either Tears of the Kingdom or um, Baldur's oh, Gate three yeah. last year, and now this year it's like there's like five or so games that could pro- possibly be a game of the year. Now, I do think probably Rebirth is most likely going to win. I was going to say, I was gonna say maybe it's a hot take, but I think Rebirth. Would easily win today if the year ended. Yeah, but the I think year as the year goes on, like it's gonna peter. Well, I mean, like, but you guys, I feel like you guys are acting like Tekken know. Eight Infinite Wealth like has a true chance against Rebirth, and I really don't think it, they do. No, I think no, no, Dragon's Dogma Two could do that, but maybe Metaphor because Persona Five. Is not Dragon's Dog was definitely gonna be a front runner. Yeah, Met- Persona Five was a. Uh... Yeah, Persona 5 was a game of the year contender when it came out in 2017. That was 2017, which is a fucking ridiculous year for video games. Yeah, I think <laughs> which um, Metaphor, if it really hits, and they, cause they've got that team behind it and it ha- definitely has the potential, that could be up there this year. D- okay. Elden Ring DLC. <laughs> Do we see Keeley proudly proclaim it as one of the no. nominees for game of the year? Nominated, I will be irate. I yeah. will be pissed off. He didn't, put Cyberpunk. he didn't put Cyberpunk there, so he's not going to put Elden Ring. But it was a more competitive year last year, so it was like more easy think, to drop it. I think Cyberpunk is like one of the best things a lot of people played that year. It was one of the best things I played. I just, I don't know. I think, I, I just, I'm win. just saying there's a chance. I don't want it either. I'm just saying like, look out when it, when I it do comes think to Keely's outlets season. could do it, and that's just going to just be just as annoying. Because there, there's a lot of games that need to get their flowers when Elden Ring has got tons. I could get some more, you know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, it's weird Big says that because he's um always says remake and like remasters count. Even no, though he's the We're argument. not doing the. <laughs> well, we this, had this, that topic. We're two hours in fusion. We can do this another time. Yeah, but that's everything in relation to the year. I'm very interested to see where 2024 lands in the great pantheon of like years in gaming. Uh, which honestly, right now I want more dry spells throughout this year because I'm yep. like, I got I got a backlog. I want to get through it. You play those Yakuza games. What we've been playing? Uh, only two things. Do we want to do uh, this because we're already running pretty late? I, I mean, we can just, we can just talk Rebirth. real quick about Rebirth. I think that's all we can really uh, mention. Rebirth, uh, Big Man Fusionator beat this one. <laughs> uh, I'm interesting I'm about, one. I'm about 70 hours in. Um, huh? I'm not... <laughs> Wolf, be quiet. <laughs> I thought it was serious for a second. I was like, what do you want? No, no, I haven't touched it since last time. <laughs> um, but yeah, Fusion, you were sounding a little low on this game. Um, We live in a society where 8 out of 10 is low. <laughs> um, no, okay, well, you were sounding lower than no, I expected. I am lower than I expected. Like, 100%. Same. That is 100% honest so far. Well, not even so far. I beat the game. I rolled credits, and I am lower than I expected, but I still really enjoyed my time with it. And like I said earlier, this probably wins game of the year, unless something... Like I said, we still have nine months left. Something could come out. But like in my eyes, I'm like, Rebirth hit a 93. People love Final Fantasy VII. Like, it's going to win it, and I won't be mad. Like, I won't sit here and be like, it takes two. Like, it's another one. Like, I'll be like, okay, Rebirth 
did a lot of things good enough to win. But yeah, for me, it's just I still had open world issues. I will say, I give Bink some props where like there were some cut, good cutscenes that I had to look up on YouTube after that I did miss from some open world stuff. <laughs> Which kind of sucked, but I'm like, whatever. The rest of your open world sucks. You're gonna sprinkle in some really oh, good no. stuff. Like, no. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah. And it's just like, the ending is very polarizing. We're not gonna get into it, obviously. But like, all the tweets I saw, all the YouTube videos before in the reviews where people are like, I hate the ending or I like the ending. Like, they weren't lying when people said it's they good. weren't gonna like the ending. And like, Binks really likes the ending, and I hate the ending honestly so like so it's gonna be up that, to me to split the vote yeah so that's kind of my oh, rebirth you, like i i really counting me out? well if you if you play it if but, you never uh, get around to playing it yeah but i really like i said i enjoyed my time i still love these characters i love this world i'm only lower on it because of how much i loved remake where it's like i love remake so much i want a rebirth to surpass it in so many ways and it just felt like in almost every way but combat, it went lower for me. And that just, like, soured me a little bit. But I still, like, really good game. It will probably not be in my top five this year. <laughs> but Dang, that I, much. Well. I think, I mean, it could be, I guess. But I, I, it's the only game on my list right now. So <laughs> right now, it is my game of the year. Um, By default. By default. But yeah, I'll, I'll let Banks get... Oh, well, actually, we'll go to Moon real quick, because Moon actually, has a... Uh... What up? Uh, sorry, real quick. I did want to ask. You said this was, like, the first time, like, a sequel to one of your favorite games of all time wasn't better? Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Like That's I said surprising. on the camp, like, two podcasts ago, like, I'm always using the camp that sequels are better. 99, 90% of the time, the sequel usually is just better. But this time around, it was the... I can't recall the last time that I was like, wow, I actually, like the prequel to this game immensely more. Like, I don't think it's even close in some aspects of how much more I like Remake over Rebirth. Uh, man, you didn't play too much more after last time, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, that got maybe a couple... I'm, like, two more chapters in. I, um, Back at Nibelheim is where I am. And... <laughs> and... Yeah, I mean, the last whole chapter is just kind of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Emphasizing what I don't like about it, at least in terms of the story. Now, granted, this this is coming from someone who didn't play the original, so maybe he's, someone who has played the original seven can enlighten me. But just felt like, what's the point of this whole chapter that I just did with Red? Uh, besides just deeping his character, but at the same time, I was just playing that whole chapter. I'm just like, I don't care. Let me get back to the main story. But apparently this is part of the main story, so I I don't know. I just did not feel like... I was just not invested. Maybe I'm in a bad headspace. I don't know. Um, you gotta play indie to get in a better headspace, dude. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, I'd, I'd just like take a break from the game if you're not in the headspace to continue I'm gonna to start play. the next chapter, and I'll see. like Because this seems more promising story-wise for me, um, where we're heading. So I'll do the next chapter, see if I'm still in this funk of a headspace. Because... Then I'll know if it's me or if it's the game. If it's me, I'll definitely go back to like Life is Strange True Colors to like refresh myself. Or if I do this next chapter and I and now I'm getting more into it, like okay, it was the game and just a chapter I didn't like. So we'll we'll find out. Tune in next week. I guess I rolled credits at ninety hours and I can play. He has a new favorite game of all time, guys. I know you're gonna make those jokes, but honestly. Going in, I did not expect this to top Tears of the Kingdom for me. It like exceeded my every expectation on just a crazy level. I love the open world. I love the stuff with Red and all the character stories. I love um, the side quests. I love just ev- the music, characters, story, the ending I love. I just love everything about this game. I, there's some flaws, maybe. like I can get why Fusion doesn't like the ending. But I really just love this game on pretty much every level and there's just there's probably 20 different like scenes in this game where like there was a scream out loud moment where like i'm holding my head because just like pure jaw dropping this like moments that i'll watch on youtube and re- just to relive for like years to come just this game is just the 90 hours i sink into it are just gonna stick with me forever because just the impact this game has had 
and I just am pretty just mind blown with how they just topped remake and made it look kind of like a tech demo. I just can't wait for part three, even though it'll be a long wait. Oh well, like four years probably. Yep. So yeah, this just mind blowing. It's hard to even put it into words. How much I love this game and the character writing, just top of the industry with their character writing and music and everything. I think it's my favorite soundtrack of all time as well. I do like the music that I've listened to. The soundtrack is phenomenal. That's like hard to argue against. Like I did all the side content in the game. I didn't do a single side quest because it's tied to like gold saucer, like high scores. So I'll go back and do that later. But I did all the Queen's Blood. I did all the side quests. I did all the world intel. I did all the summoning and proto relic stuff. I did everything. You know, like none of it felt like a wasted moment to me. I never got sick of any of it. Like there can be open world games where you kind of like get sick of it. No, I was in this the whole time. It has everything I want in the game. Like these are probably the best towns in a game I've ever played. Like each town had a unique style, was memorable. Like the people density, people living their lives and conversations going on, just absolutely bar none, just incredible. That is very exciting to hear. I'm happy for you. Uh, I, I what, do, can I not say something nice? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't I think mean. you can. I literally just said I'm happy for you. You got okay. a competitive. We're gonna have group therapy right here on the podcast. That'd okay, be interesting. It's just gonna be us talking shit to each other. I, I, we'll get back to this game, guys. Don't worry. I know you guys have been waiting for my opinion on Rebirth, <laughs> but. You know, you gotta you gotta give it some time. I'm I'm the slow cooker. They call me the slow cooker at Slice of Gaming because I I slow cook my meals. The you, slow you, cooker you, you wolf five. Me? Yeah, can exactly, I, exactly. Can I spend like thirty seconds on Unicorn Overlord? Yeah, quickly. Yeah, uh, good game. Basic story, really interesting. Like gameplay loop and the world building is surprisingly good. I'm only three hours in, but good so far. Did you realize he cut me off during my slow cooker rant? Because I'm the slow You cooker. needed to be cut off during that rant. I needed... I'm a slow cooker, that's why. Don't keep calling you're yourself with me. that, that's weird. Fusion, you're with me, right? I'm the slow uh, cooker. You uh, beat games extremely fast, so I don't know if you... Whenever you... Well, that. When you commit <laughs> to a game, you'll beat that game very quickly. Or, like, you'll that's play true. a ton of it. Like you can... Spider-Man 2 in two days. I was like, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, if you commit to it, like infinite wealth or persona you like go hard on a game once you like get in that headspace and really grind it out which is, yeah, which is what's gonna happen which is what's yeah. gonna happen with rebirth when yeah, i get I was, to it yeah that's it's what i was called really a slow cook that's, <laughs> that's not what it's called yes i was talking with fusion about that the slow he's a slow cook into consuming the food <laughs> it's right no no right now i'm slow cooking rebirth in my stomach right now and when i do play it i'm eating it so you get me you get me. F- yeah, Man, let's, let's get us out of here. <laughs> yeah, let's get out of here. We're, we're supposed to be the new Slimmer podcast. We already broke that after one episode. It, no, it's, it's not still as bad Slim. As... This is not three hours. <laughs> Two hours. Three. It's, it's allowed to be longer because Rebirth is the last big, big game of the year so far. So it's allowed to be bigger. <laughs> anyway, so hope you all enjoyed. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that other good stuff. So hopefully there'll be more news next week. And wow. now... That it's the end of the episode. You're, uh, what was the word I was looking for? Ah, Man, you're no happening? longer subscribed to a slice of gaming pro. <laughs> so make sure to leave check a out like. Our videos. Yeah, we got to check out all the other videos. We're going to be putting out some more pretty soon. We're uh, planning some individual content. So look forward to that. We're expanding. We're coming up on our one year and we're going to be expanding. It's all exciting. Stuff. Holy shit, it's been a year. <laughs> we're coming up on it pretty soon. <laughs> before you know it. So hope you all have a good night and say good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.